Deep inside the heart of the galaxy, there's a force called the NHL on Fox. <laughs> the Panthers and the Flyers swear off in a city of brotherly love. <laughs> Can't you just feel the love in this place? It's all knotted up at two each as Florida shocked the orange and black in game one. But things got black and blue for the boys from down south two times. Then the Panthers got even in overtime. Today, the Bees man tries to be the King Bee. And Hextall won't stand in as anyone's understudy. Mr. Sandman, step aside. Because it's two all and Motown is serving up as the wings jumped all over the blues. But it took overtime to get it in tune. And after the critics said the great one lost his touch, he showed them all Friday night like he is. Truly magic. But remember, you can't count out the Ob boys because they've exchanged their measly rubles for a five spot. Hey, 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 don't touch that remote because we've got our pucks in a row. The one and only NHL on Fox. Last night in Pittsburgh, the Rangers facing elimination in the second round for the second straight year. And when Mario Lemieux and Yarmir Yager each get a hat trick, you can kiss it goodbye. Rangers fall by the score of 7-3. Now Pittsburgh faces the winner of Philadelphia and Florida. Meanwhile, in Colorado, that series tied at two. This goal by Valerie Kaminsky puts the avalanche up 2-0. They go on to win it 4-1. Now lead Chicago three games to two. And welcome to Hollywood, everyone, and the NHL on Fox. I'm James Brown, along with my partner, Dave Maloney. No matter who wins between Philadelphia and the Panthers, they got to find a way to stop Yager and Lemieux. 15 goals between them in that series. Well, the thing is, JB, we mentioned a couple weeks ago, uh, this time of the year, talent is a fact there, and it doesn't get any better than Yager and Lemieux. But I think the key, JB, is the fact that how well Pittsburgh played in their own end of the ice. Wilkinson, Tamer, and LaRue controlled the front of the Pittsburgh net. Reggett made the big saves. This Pittsburgh hockey team is coming together nice, led by the extremely talented Lemieux and Yager. No question about it. All right, Dave, time now for our Fox Watch In. We've got two games for you this afternoon, and in both, we find the number one seeds in a battle for their playoff lives. Each series is tied at two games apiece, which means it comes down to a best two out of three. Our first stop is in the Motor City of Detroit, and that's where we find Sam Rosen. And good afternoon, Sam. And good afternoon to you, JB. Here in Detroit, the Red Wings are trying to regain the edge in this series. A week ago, the Red Wings beat the Blues here in Detroit 8-3. to three. They led two games to none in the series, and a lot of people thought it was over. But no, the St. Louis Blues came back on home ice. They won game three in overtime. They got very physical with the Red Wings and slowed their game down. They shut out the Red Wings 1-0 in game four. The first time this season, the Red Wings have been shut out. With the exception of Steve Eiserman, the big guns have been shut down for Detroit. The Red Wings are the big favorites in this series, and they're feeling the pressure to win. I'm feeling lots of pressure. I don't know, I'm like, even a little nervous before even today's this afternoon games because you gotta show everything you got out there nothing to say for the red wings are looking for a big start this afternoon the blues want to slow them down the red wings are hoping the octopus will tie up st louis now to philadelphia and mike Everett. as in detroit sam here in philadelphia we have a nervous home team the favorite the Flyers won the Eastern Conference. They've got the big-name stars. They're not ahead in the series. Look at these numbers. They're way ahead in most of the numbers. Shots, 145 to 98. Scoring chances, face-offs won. But they're even and goals scored at nine each. Why has Florida tied this series? We asked Flyers goalie Ron Hexall. These guys work, man. They work like dogs. That's, that's why they're a good hockey team. No other reason. Yeah, they got some ability. Yeah, they play a good system. They're well coached. There's, there's a lot of good things about that hockey team, but they work. They absolutely work, work, work from start to finish, and that's why they're a good hockey team. Today, both teams get snipers back. Ray Shepard returns to the Panthers after some bumps and bruises. John LeClaire is back from the blue, which kept him to just one shift last game. Good health, great goaltending, wonderful matchup. We're looking forward to this one, J.B. All right, Doc, thank you very much. I mean, my gosh, Philly is a big favorite. You surprised it's all I am surprised at this one, J.B. I mentioned, er, no, I'm sorry. I'm not terribly surprised at this one. Mm -hmm. The fact is, John Van Breesbrook is the factor in this series. 24 shots in game two, he gave up two shots. This guy 
could win the series. This is a very good goaltender who is hot. He is giving his chance to win a hockey game. Van Beesbrook is the key. Okay, now we heard them say uh, St. Louis a little old in this series. Detroit, I mean, they're the Chicago Bulls of the NHL. You've got to be a little surprised here. Yes, I'm very surprised with what we saw at Detroit-St. Louis last week. Detroit absolutely rolled. But in Game 3, Fatisov throws the puck away in overtime. St. Louis wins. Game 4, Casey keeps his team in 1-0. The great one finally scores for the first time in 12 games. There's a very old st louis team that is playing gritty hockey i think the first 10 minutes of this afternoon's hockey game will be crucial to detroit if they can get back in their flow and let their talent work detroit will continue to roll even though i'm older than you by about eight months we know eight guys get a little physical when things <laughs> get tight right all right david all right folks and we're going to send you out to your contest as the nhl on fox continues after this arena for today's blues red wings game how critical is this contest well going into this round the four series that were tied at two the team that won game five won the series sam rosen and joe micheletti have the call the red wings blasted through the first two games of this series in detroit and left the blues wondering what happened well meet you in st louis there, the intimidated became the intimidators. Unlikely heroes emerged, and tired legs found new drive. Now, with the series tied at two, the Red Wings find Detroit a sight for sore eyes. St. Louis Blues heading out of the ice in Detroit. A week ago, many people thought they wouldn't be back in Detroit. The Red Wings won the first two games, game two, eight to three, but the Blues turned it around by winning two in St. Louis. Now it's a best of three series, opening up with game five on the Western Conference semifinals in Detroit. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs on Fox. I'm Sam Rosen, along with Joe Micheletti, and the St. Louis Blues have turned this series around with two wins at home, and a large part in due to the goaltending of John Casey. Yeah, maybe the biggest part because of John Casey. Remember just a week ago when John Casey allowed eight goals here in Detroit, the Blues trailed the series 2-0. Everyone thought they were finished, but John Casey has turned things around. The veteran won game three, five, four in overtime, and then for the first time all season, this Detroit team was shut out, one nothing by John Casey. After game two, people were calling Wayne Gretzky the gray one. Now he's back after two wins to being the great one. Well, he's using what people were saying as a motivation to play well, and he has played well. People forget that he has led the playoffs in assists, but he was being criticized for not scoring any goals. Well, he changed all that in game four with the only goal of the game, the game winner. For and Detroit, Steve Eiserman has been their big offensive man. Yeah, he has been terrific. Eiserman with nine points in the series. If there has been one wing that has stood out, it's been Eiserman, and he is going to need help from some of his other players. Eiserman can't do it all alone. And maybe he'll get help from the octopus this afternoon. Certainly, he'll try to get help in goal. Chris Osgood is 2-1 and one in this series, 4-2 and two overall. The one loss was the 1-0 loss in Game 4, in which he faced 15 shots. Wayne Gretzky and Steve Eisenman on the opening face-off, and we're underway with Game 5. The Red Wings have Bob Rouse, number 3, Nicholas Lidstrom, number 5 on defense. Steve Eisenman with Keith Primo, number 55, and Darren McCarty, number 25. Primo heading for the net. Casey sweeps the puck aside. Wayne Gretzky with Shane Corson and Brett Hall. For St. Louis, Al McInnes and Murray Barron on defense. McInnes, number two, comes out with the puck. And he drives it wide of the net. McCarty back for it. Shane Corson, who played center in game four, did a great job on Steve Eisenman in that game. Starts off on left wing. The Blues still without Peter Zessel, who's out with an injury. And Scotty Bowman, of course, has the last line change, and I'm sure he'll try to keep Eiserman away from Corson. Meanwhile, the first five to seven min uh, minutes of this game, Sam, I think are going to be the most important. And the wings break in. Here's Kozlov moving in the backhander, tipped by Casey. He stayed with him all the way. Puck back into the Detroit zone. Konstantinov almost lost it to Glenn Anderson. Anderson gets hit by Larionov, got knocked down. Kravchuk with a shot, the save made by Osgood. Puck kept in by Chris Pronger for St. Louis. Wayne Gretzky still on the ice. 
Kozlov comes out with it. A hit for Fedorov. Now Gretzky goes off, replaced by Adam Creighton. Puck in the corner center. Larionov put it in front. Pronger blocked it. Pronger looking for it. Fedorov finds it. Fedorov hit from behind by Pronger. Larionov plays it against Creighton. And he's forced back out of the zone by Yuri Himalev, number 13. Himalev played his first game of this series in game four, played very well. Here's Fedorov with the puck. Holding, drops it off, big shot by Bob Airy, it's stopped by Casey. The puck, Chris Draper, and he's ridden out of the play by Igor Kravchuk. The referee this afternoon, Andy Van Helleman, in his eighth playoff game. That shot deflected off Kravchuk, and Casey dives on top. Well, Glenn Anderson still has great speed, even at his age, and he's able to work in down the right wing boards, get the puck past Konstantinov, and a good job by Eisgood coming out of the net to use his stick to clear it. Meanwhile, what a play by Fedorov. They're always looking for the late players. This time it's Bob Airy with the shot, but you also notice that John Casey did not have anyone in front of him, and he easily made the save. Meanwhile, there should be plenty of hitting in this game. The Blues have gotten back into this series because of their physical play, and when we take a look at the hits, game game one, 51 hits for the Blues. They lost 47, but look at the last two games. 71 hits for the Blues in each of the last two games. Who are the biggest hitters, Joe? Murray Barron led the way with nine hits, and Chris Pronger, also on defense, had played very physical. He had seven hits in game four. Chris Draper for Detroit, number 33 against Steve Leach. And Draper won the draw. Paul Coffey plays it around the board for Martin LaPointe. LaPointe in the corner. Checked there by Murray Barron. LaPointe keeps it alive. Off the stick of Airy. He chases it down. Taken away by McKinnis. Couldn't clear. Airy's shot went wide. Van Floor is... As, Airy, as rather Bob Airy went down. This is Bergevin deep with the puck. His shot was blocked. The puck around the boards is played by Steve Leach. Bergevin was the man who had been taken down earlier. And an excellent defensive play by Al McKinnis blocking the pass across. Coffey plays it down for Airy. McKinnis with a hip check on Airy. Good check by Barron on Darren McCarty. Craig McTavish moved it up the board. Steve Leach is there, number 27. Now McKinnis. Good pressure from the Red Wings. Forces a turnover. Eisenman with a back pass to Coffey. Winds up for the shot. It's blocked. It hit Al McKinnis, who was down on the ice. McTavish able to clear the zone. Three minutes gone by. Bob Rouse slides it down the boards. McCarty against McTavish. McKinnis looks to move the puck. He does out of the zone. Played back by Lidstrom to Eisenman. And thus far, it's been a better start for Detroit. They've had the puck more than they had, certainly in the first period in game number four. They've been forcing the play in the neutral zone and turning the puck over back towards the Blues net. Pronger with a good hit. Knocked down Primo. Eiserman keeps the puck in for Detroit. McCarty takes a bump. Wrap around by Primo's a save made. Beauty by John Casey. Big Keith Primo with the long arms and the big reach. Came around the net. Casey stayed with him. Puck alive in the corner. Eiserman playing it for Detroit. Checked by Shane Corson. Worked down by Konstantinov. McCarty keeps it going, but Jeff Portnall for St. Louis. Takes a hit. Lost the puck. Batisov tied up with Corson. Primo's got the puck. Primo checked there. Plays it deep. Charlie Huddy with a check on Primo. McCarty moves it to Igor Larianov. Charlie Huddy for St. Louis. Lifts it clear. A little over four minutes gone by. And the Blues have had only one trip into the Detroit zone. Well, Detroit has been very aggressive in this game thus far. They have been on the puck, and Al McKinnis has been spectacular defensively. Well, the part that we have to be very, very prepared for is a quick start and a real strong start in terms of momentum and intensity that we expect from them, the support of their crowd, uh, the situation that they're in, and the expectations here are so high that we want to be able to contain and deal with that part of their game to start with and hopefully be able to take the game and play it on our terms. And it seems as if St. Louis has come more prepared to play than they were a week ago. Well, without question, they're at least trying to get sticks on the Detroit Red Wing players and trying to slow them down somewhat. The other problem Detroit has had is getting the puck through to the net. This puck slides into the crease. Casey covers up. Good pressure again by the Red Wings. Yeah, just to finish that thought, Sam, the Detroit what they have had problems with 
they're shooting the puck, but the Blues have done a great job blocking shots, deflecting passes. We saw Al McInnes on the long shift that he had make a couple of very good plays. This time they do get it in front. Good job by Wayne Gretzky coming back to help out defensively on Doug Brown. And there was John Casey just jumping on the loose puck, getting a whistle. And the Blues very confident that they can win most of the faceoffs. Now Shane Corson, as we mentioned, back at center taking the faceoff. Against Greg Johnson. Johnson kicks it back to Coffey for the shot. Did not get through. Bounces down into the corner. He knows Cicerelli against Murray Barron. Cicerelli kicked it to Johnson. Johnson checked there by Corson. Johnson inserted in the lineup, replacing Tim Taylor for Detroit. Al McInnes lifts it clear. Almost five minutes gone by. First period, no score in game five. And right after Shane Corson wins the faceoff, the puck comes to center ice. He leaves, and Yuri Himalev comes on the ice with the Gretzky hull line. Mark Bergevin. Now it's Greg Johnson. Taken away by Himalev. Gretzky plays it in front for Hull. He scores! Beautiful play by the St. Louis Blues. It started with a turnover near the blue line. Gretzky sets up Hull. St. Louis grabs the early lead. And Brett Hall made a smart play by just staying in front of the net, hoping that there would be a turnover. That's a goal scorer's goal, and what a setup by Gretzky. Now the Blues want to continue to forecheck and get the puck in deep. Detroit has a chance to clear the puck. Right here is Bergevin. And then they've got plenty of time here, and they just turn it over. Now look at Hall right here. He stays there, and Gretzky sets him up. And when you give Brett Hall that kind of time, he'll turn it into a goal. Chris Osgood didn't have a chance as Brett Hall breaks out and scores. Brett Hall, who said he didn't feel comfortable with the way the puck was coming off his stick. This is his second goal of this series, his fifth playoff goal. Wayne Gretzky gets the assist at 5:15, and Wayne Gretzky now leads all players in assists in the playoffs with 13. Brett Hull looked comfortable there, didn't he? <laughs> oh, very comfortable. Icing is whistled against St. Louis. So the Blues get the early lead on Brett Hull's goal. Wayne Gretzky now has 249 career assists. And though he didn't get an assist on the play, Yuri Himalev made a big play forcing the turnover. Yes, he did. Himalev right there to help with the turnover. He anticipated the pass and just played it perfectly and did the right thing. Got it to Wayne Gretzky, who then had a little bit of time. And that's all he needs to set up Red Hall. Off the faceoff, Igor Kravchuk swings it around the boards for Himalev off his stick. Igor Larionov has it. Now Fetisov in deep, checked by Brian Noonan, number 28 for St. Louis. Himalev, who came over from Buffalo, did not play particularly well for St. Louis after the trade. Oh well, here was a player that couldn't get into the lineup. Kravchuk's long shot is stopped. He played in game four, and Mike Keenan, after the first couple of shifts, if someone, if he thinks someone is playing well, he'll stick, stick with him. So Himalev killed penalties and played the power play as well. Puck cleared out by Kravchuk. There's another player back in the lineup who's played well. The net was knocked off as Noonan and Konstantinov when skating into the net. Now, Brett Hall with that tremendous release, and he has been hampered the last month because of that hamstring injury. It was only a week ago that he was able to start walking again without a limp. And even last Sunday in the warm-ups, he hurt the hamstring again when he and Jeff Portnell collided. And, of course, the Blues got off to that terrible start with Detroit just all over them and leading 5-1 in the first. But he is feeling better now. This time, Konstantinov, the defenseman, moving up on the play. Brian Noonan, again, one of the Blues' physical players, takes Konstantinov into the net. They're waving the white pom-poms. The standing room only crowd here at Joe Louis Arena trying to get their Red Wings going. Steve Leach is ridden down to the play by Nicholas Lidstrom. Puck around the boards. Here is Keith Primo. Primo, who scored 27 goals in the regular season, has only one playoff goal in nine games, and that was an empty net goal. Murray Barron with a puck. Taken back by Al McInnes. There's a penalty upcoming on Detroit. First penalty of the game, a delayed penalty. Blues get an extra skater on. Al McInnes fires ahead. Touch by the Red Wings. The whistle stopped the play, and here comes the first power play of the game. To the Blues on a slashing call. Whistled by referee Andy Van Helleman. 
Well, this will be on Keith Primo. Primo going in. Am Al McKinnis right there. There's the slash. He gets the stick up high and slashes the right elbow of Al McKinnis, and that was directly in front of Andy Van Helleman. And, of course, he knows that this is going to be a physical series, or a physical game, I should say. And the Blues with an early power play. And Sam, just the opposite of what Detroit wanted. They wanted a good start, wanted the crowd into it, and things have changed with the quick goal by Brett Hull, and now the Blues on the power play. And the Blues power play has been effective in this series, 5 for 23. The Red Wings did not give up a power play goal in their first series against Winnipeg. And look for the Blues to try and set up Shane Corson in front. They want their defensemen to take the shot because of the aggressiveness of Detroit's penalty killers. They go in deep th towards the net. Their points are wide open. They want them shooting with Corson in front. Corson is tied with in the NHL in the playoffs with all of Nick with uh, six playoff goals. He's tied with Adam Graves of the New York Rangers. Now six power play goals. Yes. Corson has scored eight goals to lead the Blues and six of them on the power play. Pronger and McInnes, Corson, Hull, and Gretzky up front for the Blues on the power play. Primo went for slashing at 6.53. Coffey and Bergevin, Eisenman, and Airy for Detroit. McInnes winds up, moves it to Gretzky. Sets up McInnes for the big shot, deflected wide of the net. Harry comes out with it. McKinnis is back. Eisenman trailing the play. It's an offside. Detroit. Harry left the puck behind. Steve Eisenman. There's Bob Harry, who played on two championship teams in Pittsburgh. Steve Eisenman, who had a great game last week, five-point game with two goals, followed that up with a hat trick in Game Three and almost won the game for Detroit. He was spectacular in Game Three. The Red Wings trailed three to one in the first period and then came back and took control of the game and Iserman three consecutive goals to give him the 4-3 lead before the Blues were able to come back and tie the game on a goal by Tony Twist and then win it in overtime. That long shot was taken by Nicholas Lidstrom. There's a surprise hero. Tony Twist and Igor Kravchuk stepped up as well. Kravchuk on the puck now. 29-year-old Russian player. Sends it ahead for Adam Creighton. Creighton on with Portnall and Anderson. Stronger and Kravchuk. And all the way down. Casey looks around, plays it away from Doug Brown of Detroit. And that's the thing that Detroit does so well, standing up at the blue line. The Blues need to shoot the puck in in that instance. Brayton hounded by Brown. Rapchuk plays it to open ice, but it's out of the zone. Final seconds of the power play for St. Louis. Osgood beats Brayton to the puck. Brown clears the zone. Teams are back at full strength. Good penalty kill by the Red Wings. Primo. Out of the penalty box, plays it deep. Casey stops it. 10.55 to go in the first period. St. Louis leading one to nothing. Buck going all the way down. This will be an icing on the Blues. Touched up by Petisov. Blues have a one nothing lead. Set for the faceoff of the Blues zone. Once again, the Red Wings fans trying to urge on their heroes. The Russian five on for the Red Wings. St. Louis has done a good job of keeping Larianov quiet. He seemed to be almost non-existent in game four. Here is Kozlov moving in. Backhander is a stick save by Casey. Fired across. Petisov going for it. Controlled by Murray Barron. Kozlov also, Sam, hasn't, uh, hasn't been very visible in the series yet. Petisov winds up. Save Casey. The rebound comes to Fedorov. His shot deflection to the crowd. With 10-13 to go. Sergei Fedorov with only one goal in the playoffs for the Red Wings. Last night, one team entered the Final Four. The Pittsburgh Penguins led by two greats. Perhaps the two best players in the game right now. Mario Lemieux with a hat trick. Yaramir Yager with a hat trick. Pittsburgh beat the Rangers 7-3 and took that series in five. The last time two players had hat trick in the same game. It was three players for L.A. in 1990 against Calgary. Tomas Sandstrom, Tony Granato, and the retired Dave Taylor. What a performance. Oh, just fantastic. It was just something to watch. Ken Reggett was fabulous in goal for Pittsburgh, but the bad news is that 
Uh, Ron Francis, their fine center iceman, blocked the shot, suffered a broken foot, and looks like he'll be done for the playoffs. Jim, do you think there'll be much, there are many changes in New York next year? I mean, the expectations were very high for that team, and to lose out in five, do you think uh, much will be done? Well, I think uh, they have to rework things, Joe. They, they built a strong team, but an older team, and they'll have a couple of free agents, and uh, I think when you go out in the second round after expectations were so high, you probably will see it. Red Wings come in three on three. Bergevin shot stopped by Casey. LaPointe is hit by Newman. Noonan. Kravchuk looking for the puck. Number five for St. Louis. He's checked there by Chris Draper. Battle continues. Hard battle. LaPointe and Newman. Noonan. Up the boards. Lidstrom plays it deep. Put out in front. Save made by Casey on Draper. Great save. John Casey looks real sharp today. He is so confident. He's cool in net. He's standing there, not getting himself in trouble, and he's he's got a good view of the puck, and he has been able to make the key save for St. Louis. The Blues have done a good job protecting John Casey in this series, but Chris Draper wants to change all that. After he and Kravchuk separate, Draper says, I'm not going anyplace. Long shot was blocked. Mike Hudson, who's playing his first playoff game, he had been out with an injury. Number 15 is on for St. Louis. This is Primo's pass off the skate. Cleared to side by McInnes. Bob Rouse tied up with Fred Hull. This is McInnes rushing the puck and sending it into the Detroit zone. 1 0, St. Louis leading it. Eight and a half minutes to go in the first period. The last time the Red Wings scored a goal was at 3 08 of the third period of game three. They've gone over 91 minutes without a goal. And they're going to try and find a way to generate more scoring chances. They've had a, a difficult time in that area. Hudson looking for it, taken back by Lidstrom. Lidstrom plays it to Bob Rouse. Cicerelli's pass was blocked by Glenn Anderson. Glenn Anderson is playing in his 223rd playoff game. That is second all time only Larry Robinson has played more 227 good hit by Himalev on Fetisov Fedorov's got the puck Konstantinov across to Doug Brown Brown shoots from a sharp angle knocked away by Casey Fedorov shot is stopped by Casey Brown again has the puck slides out of the zone Brown retrieves it now Fedorov here's Fetisov carrying it in Low down by Pronger. It took the puck away. Konstantinov trying to keep it in. Kravchuk takes it back. Kravchuk. Right behind you. Now Himalev. And across to Pronger. No, no. And Sam, now the game is turned the other way. Detroit came out with a great start the first three, three and a half minutes of this game. And now it seems to be going back to the way the Blues want to play. Long shots from Detroit. Not many good scoring chances keeping them to the outside and slowing the game down. Brian Noonan with the puck. Now Jeff Courtnall. Plays it across for Noonan. He's forced back. Noonan holding. Courtnall checked by Bergevin. Good hit by Mark Bergevin. Creighton hit by Coffey. Bergevin against Courtnall and Noonan. Now Chris Draper moves it. Kept in by Pronger. Creighton tied up with Draper. Well, the call shot by Barron is a save by Osgood. And LaPointe wants to get it Murray Barron. Barron's been the leading hitter. He took down LaPointe. Nothing was called on the play. And LaPointe wanted to get back at Barron. And here's what St. Louis has been doing. Look at all the Blues players back. Look at them all. They're all here. They're all coming back on the play. And watch how they keep the puck to the outside. Watch his shot. That's from well out. That's Doug Brown shooting from way over here. That's well out. John Casey makes an easy save, and then the Blues eventually end up able to clear the zone. But that's what they have done so effectively in the last couple of games is Detroit, instead of being effective with all their speed down the middle, they're forcing them to the outside, and John Casey is able to see the shots, and he hasn't faced all that many difficult shots in the last game or so. Chris Pronger with a wrist shot that trickles wide. Steve Leach behind the net had it knocked away by Fetisov. Slava Kozlov moving it to Konstantinov. 
Lorianov to Fetisov. The five Russians on for Detroit. Kozlov moving in. Takes the shot. It's wide. Konstantinov goes deep with it. Checked by McTavish. And Huddy. McTavish moves it up the boards. Fetisov stopped it. Fedorov plays it. Now Konstantinov shoots. Save Casey. Good shot and a fine save by John Casey. 11 shots on goal for Detroit. Only three for St. Louis. But the Blues lead one to nothing on the goal by Brett Hull. With 5.45 to go in the first period. Fetisov. Taken away by Gretzky. Races after it. Himalev goes to the net. Gretzky around. He turns. Backhander. Save Osgood. The rebound loose. And the Red Wings clear it aside. Murray Barron goes deep with it. Bob Rouse. Able to move it to Kozlov. Blues have really picked up their play. They have a good job by Detroit after the turnover coming back into the zone and helping out. Steve Eisenman for Detroit. Offside. He stick handled on the line as one of his players went in on the far side. 5-12 to go in the first. Gretzky had a good chance, but he was stopped. Back to the action as Steve Eisenman was deep and just chipped it wide of the net. Corson is tied up with Bob Rouse. Back comes Eisenman. Meets McInnes who holds him up. Puck in the corner. Murray Barron with a hit. He's the leading hitter for the Blues. Eisenman turns. Off the skate of McInnes. McCarty tries to get it to Primo. He bumps with Fred Hull. Bob Rouse works it down the boards. McCarty there. Hit by Barron. McCarty keeps it alive. Trying to get it out in front. There's McInnes who's been really good for St. Louis. Rouse took a hit from Hudson. Lidstrom against McInnes. Forces him back. Casey out to stop the puck. Gave it away to Draper who fired it across. Casey had trouble that time. Stick handling. Kept in by the Red Wings with 4.05 to go in the first period. Martin Lapointe checked by Shane Corson. Puck bounces out in front. Barron grabbed it, lost it. And Lapointe still batting at it and digging at it. The puck goes in, but I don't believe it'll be a goal. I believe that whistle may have blown. The red light went on. Big scramble. Lapointe never stopped digging that stick into John Casey and trying to puck, uh, poke the puck into the net. Great Excellent. effort by LaPointe. Excellent effort by LaPointe. And Shane Corson came back to help out Casey because that puck ended up to Casey's right and Casey was on the other side. It'll ju just go up in the air. Now Murray Barron tries to clear it and can't. Good job by Draper. Now there's Corson and the puck is underneath Casey and LaPointe doesn't stop. It looked like a little bit of a late whistle from Andy Van Helleman. But good job there by Draper. Now watch LaPointe. Keep going. Once. Twice. He sees the puck. It's right there. That's probably why Andy didn't blow the whistle right away. And then eventually it goes underneath Casey and LaPointe doesn't stop on the play. Casey, good job there. LaPointe sees the puck still loose, but it is finally underneath Casey. And by that time, the whistle had blown. Casey was getting back up. And it was that last jab of the stick by LaPointe that knocked the puck into the net and Casey not very happy with Andy Van Helleman on the call. And he's gone over to the official scorer's table to say I blew the whistle. The whistle had blown. No goal. 3.54 to go in the first and St. Louis leading one to nothing. No question. That the whistle went right away and the point kept going before the puck eventually went into the net well after the whistle. It's now more than 96 minutes since Detroit has scored a goal. Gretzky breaking in offside St. Louis on the play. Time for a Pizza Hut game break. And for that, let's go back to Hollywood and JB. Sam and Joe, I know you guys have seen this a number of times. Take a look at Hextall playing the puck off of the board, a wicked bounce. Scotty Bowman says it's okay to leave the net to play the puck, but make sure you get back quickly, and Rextall does that nicely, just in time to save it. Let's take it back. Thanks, JB. What a series that is, huh, Joe? Tremendous series. Physical, physical series. And those young Florida Panthers, not all of them are young. They've got some key veterans on that team, but they are hanging in there. What a surprise. 
as that series is even at two games apiece, the Eastern Conference semifinal. What about Dave Lowry? Didn't score many goals during the regular season. He's been the playoff hero for Florida thus far. Right, right here, St. Louis, with a lot of heroes, the biggest of which today has been John Casey. Yeah, and I should say, along with Van Beesbrook in well, Florida as well, he's been pretty good also. But you're right, John Casey has stepped up and been very steady for St. Louis. Moved up the boards by Pronger. Long shot by Lidstrom, knocked away. Just a nice little play, an easy play by John Casey. He is playing with great confidence this afternoon. Gary tied up along the boards by Yuri Himalev. Puck kept in by Lidstrom. LaPointe gave it away to Pronger, who clears the zone. Well, we saw Ron Hextall leave the net. These two goaltenders will not leave the net that often. If they do, and if we see them out of the net handling the puck, then generally bad things happen to these two guys. Wings come deep. Rouse playing it behind the net to Kozlov. Kozlov lost the puck. Jeff Portnall able to clear it out. Detroit has outshot St. Louis 13 to 4 here in the first period. John Casey having a strong afternoon. And Casey is a very unorthodox goalie. If you want your young child to learn how to play goal, don't show him a video of John Casey. He uses his stick. He tries to anticipate. He's not your basic stand-up goaltender. Very acrobatic. Just simply unorthodox. Here's the stick right there. Look at it. He just tries to anticipate. He leaves his feet. And most goaltending consultants will tell you, cut down the angles, hold, hold your angle, keep square to the shooter. John Casey does the opposite, but gets the job done. Dominic Hasek gets the job done in Buffalo. One of the most unorthodox goaltenders ever. Just stop the puck, baby. <laughs> just stop any way you can. That's it. And John Casey's done a great job. Here's Fedorov moving in against McKinnis. Puts it in front. Help from Jeff Courtnall. Puck kept in by Konstantinov. Long shot went off a skate. And at 45 to go in the first period. Chance for Larianov. Sets up Fedorov. Block. And Karam's out to Brian Noonan. Ahead for Courtnall. And he's hip checked by Fetisov and sent flying. And down go Corson and Kozlov. Here's Dino Cicerelli for Detroit. Konstantinov took a punch at Courtnall in center ice. Fired around the boards by Hudson and out of the zone. Coffey has to chase back for it. In the last two periods of game four in St. Louis, the Red Wings outshot the Blues 25-9. The Blues scored the only goal. This afternoon, it's 13-4 in shots. And another penalty coming up to Detroit. The Blues are going to get another power play. Looks like Dino Cicerelli going off. Second power play of the game. This one to St. Louis. Now, Dino Cicerello, we know what a competitor he is. And that's Adam Creighton without the puck. And Dino Cicerelli just gets his stick up on him a little bit. Boy, that wasn't much of a wasn't much of a call. Meanwhile, here's what the Blues are doing with Federov. Look at the three players back and look at Al McKinnis. We've talked about him the entire first period, about the way he has played defensively. A tremendous play by McKinnis and then Courtnall back to help out as well. Now here was Konstantinov. Just a little bit of a stick by Jeff Courtnall, enough to slow him down in the neutral zone. And Konstantinov, one of the great competitors in this game today. Goes back after Courtnall. And we can just feel the intensity of this game heating up. You can tell the Detroit Red Wings are getting somewhat frustrated with their inability to score goals. And the Blues, that style they play, it can, it can wear on you after a while. It's starting to wear on Detroit. Cicerelli called for elbowing at 18.54. Blues second power play of the game. They're 0 for 1. Red Wings have not had a power play as the Blues have really become disciplined over the last three games after taking 13 or being shorthanded 13 times in game two. Pronger's long shot blocked. Good play by Konstantinov. Pronger to McInnes. Now to Brett Hull. To Gretzky. Corson's in front. Gretzky checked by Konstantinov. The puck cleared out. Good play again by Vladimir Konstantinov. McInnes. With 25 seconds to go in the first period. Blues leading one to nothing. Around the boards. 
stopped by McInnes. Plays it deep for Brett Hull. Out to Chris Pronger. Hull waiting. Try to fire it through. He's blocked. Pronger to McInnes. Makes the shot. Walks in. Now he shoots. Save made by Osgood. And cleared out. And that'll do it for the period. And once again, the Detroit Red Wings go without a goal. They've now gone over 100 consecutive minutes without scoring a goal. John Casey doing the job. Detroit looking to find a way to break through on St. Louis. The Blues getting a goal from Brett Hull. Despite the fact that they were outshot 13 to 5, they scored the only goal of the period. Brett Hall getting it, and at the end of one in game five, St. Louis won, Detroit nothing. We'll send it back to JB and Dave after these words and a message from your local Fox station. Off goal at 515 from Gretzky and Himalev, but the key thus far has been the great defensive play of the St. Louis Blues, which really started turning things around in game three. Defense wins hockey games, in particular it wins championships, but we had a team we were playing against that could blow uh, most teams apart offensively if you let them loose, and we had to re recover and reestablish our defensive game. And they've done just that, Joe. And they've done it with team defense and great individual performances. Here's Al McInnes on Fedorov, but look at Jeff Court now coming back to pick up the loose puck. Here's Draper, and look at all the help he's going to get. Murray Barron playing very physical. They're not passing up the opportunity to hit someone. Steve Leach this time on Steve Eiserman. And how about this play? Coming back, Brian Noonan taking the defenseman, Konstantinov, out of the play. No scoring chance on John Casey. John Casey has been absolutely brilliant, taking over for Grant Fuhr early in the Toronto series. He helped carry the Blues to the win over Toronto in that series, and after a terrible game a week ago, he has really bounced back with two outstanding performances and a great first period today. Well, Mike Keenan has been preaching all season long to the people in St. Louis that he has built this team for the playoffs and not for the regular season. They were two games under 500 during the regular season at home. They're 5-0 and at home this season, so it's been a much different team in the playoffs. So the first period statistics brought to you by Bud Ice. We are underway in the second. Blues on a power play. 40 seconds remaining in the penalty to Dino Cicerelli. Shane Corson taken out by Vladimir Konstantinov. Puck cleared all the way down. John Casey comes out to get it. Doug Brown bearing down on him. Al McInnes with Chris Pronger. Wayne Gretzky, Jeff Kortnall, and Brett Hull for the power play. Konstantinov moves it to Bob Airy. Airy and Brown, Konstantinov and Lidstrom for Detroit. Gretzky for Hull. Quick shot, sticked aside by Osgood. Kortnall lost it. Konstantinov tried to clear, knocked down by Pronger. Hull playing it for the net for White. Gretzky's there to take it. Pass blocked by Lidstrom, who fires it down the ice. And it deflected off the Detroit bench, stopping play. The power play is over for St. Louis. And Vladimir Konstantinov, we talked about his competitiveness. This is on Shane Corson. Konstantinov will not pass up the opportunity to make a physical play. A lot of people think he's dirty. He might be, but he is one competitive player. Man who was drafted in 1989 in the 11th round. Pretty good pick. And then defected from Russia five years ago and has not been back since. Has ill feelings about going back to Russia. Done a great job for the Red Wings. Well, as Mike Keenan said, every coach in this league would love to have yeah. Konstantinov on their team. Charlie Huddy with a long shot that stopped by Osgood. Blues have dressed six defensemen, but have used only five. Jay Wells has not played thus far. Charlie Huddy has played some, but basically St. Louis goes with a four-man rotation. Darren McCarty with a shot. Nice save by Casey. Loose puck. They poke at it. Casey's got it as Eiserman was trying to reach the rebound, and Casey found it in the crease first. That was an excellent save by John Casey on the rebound. That's the only the second rebound that he's faced in this game. The long shot first from McCarty. Now, coming back, Huddy can't find the puck, and Eisman coming in from the other side 
and Casey was able to get down to his left and get his pads on the ice. Here's the initial save. Now watch him recover and go down to the left and take everything away down low. Charlie Huddy also helped him out, but Casey was there to cover up on the rebound. The initial shot, Eisenman coming in, the hottest of all the Red Wings. And even he is having trouble scoring lately. I think one, should, one thing should be noted here. Anyone who sprays snow on the net cam needs to clean it off. <laughs> Come on here. A minute and a half gone by in the second who period. Who did that? <laughs> Sent back in by the Blues. Not only did the Blues play outstanding defense in the first period, Joe, but they were disciplined. They took no penalties in that first period, which is, again, something you talked about earlier. They, the Detroit Red Wings had 22 power plays in the first two games, 10 in the last two games, and they have not had one yet in this game. Fired out by Eisenman off the stick. Primo going for it, but he's offside. He's got a retreat, allowing the Blues to play the puck. Igor Kravchuk. Kravchuk, Pronger, McKinnis, and Barron Play the majority of the time on defense for St. Louis. Huddy no! gets some time. There's a lead for Kozlov. Saved by Casey of Beauty with a glove. Good shot by Vladimir, by, by Vyacheslav Kozlov. Puts it in front, and it's taken by Gretzky. It's away from the hook of Kozlov. Who's moving the puck well. Gretzky behind the back to Hull. Hull against Fetisov. Fires from a sharp angle. Osgood with a save. Gretzky tried to put it in front for Barron, who was cutting in. Gretzky plays it ahead again, and it's blocked. Hull was hanging at the top of the crease once again. That's just where he scored from in the first period. Offside whistled on St. Louis. And maybe John Casey's best save came off the stick of Vyacheslav Kozlov. Kozlov, the quick release, just inside the top of the circle. John Casey, good position, right at the top of the crease. And the quick glove hand, he didn't catch it, but he was able to deflect the shot up and over the net. And he's only faced one rebound shot and in this game. The Red Wings have been denied second chances. And a lot of people asked John Casey about, what did you do after last Sunday? What went through your mind? And he said, I took two days off. I went home and did the thing I like doing most, spending time with the family. Chris Draper scores! Breakaway by Draper. And Detroit breaks the shutout string and ties the game 1 1. What a pass! from Nicholas Littstrom all the way across ice to Draper. He fakes the shot, gets Casey to move the, spread the legs apart. Remember, we talked about Casey being unorthodox. Watch what he does with his stick. There's the perfect pass. Now watch, a little move here. He gets Casey to spread the legs, has to stick out to the side, and he puts it right through his legs. Tremendous pass on the tape of Draper. Faked a couple of shots, waited for Casey to move, got him to spread the legs, and then just put it between the legs. And that goal ties this game at one, and this and this crowd is back into it. 103 minutes and 20 seconds between goals for Detroit, and they got a chance to throw the octopus on the ice. That one looks cooked. <laughs> and they take him and throw him in the Detroit River and feed the fish with him. This has been a Detroit team all season long that has not had to rely on one or two or three or four or five players. They have done it with their depth. They set the record because of using four lines. Many different players contributing. Chris Draper is just one of those. Draper with his third playoff goal, his first of this series from Lidstrom and Rouse at 3.05. And the game is tied. It came on the 17th shot of the game for the Red Wings. Rouse and Lidstrom stay on defense, and Draper, Airy, and LaPointe stay on for Detroit. Himalev. Off the boards. Bob Rouse was tied up. Al McInnes. Newton 
taken down by Rouse. Fedorov moves it around. It's stopped by Gretzky. Martin LaPointe. Here comes Sergei Fedorov with speed. Pulls up. He shoots. Saved by Casey. Hard shot by Fedorov. Pronger out with the puck. Stopped at the line by Himalayev. Recovered by Paul Coffey. Paul Coffey's been very quiet in this game. I really have. Coffey, of course, was thrown out of game number three with a game misconduct in the first period. So he missed some time, but Detroit is fired up now as they have come back to tie this game. Red Hall has the goal this afternoon for St. Louis. Matched by Chris Draper in game one. Chris Osgood was the story. His great goaltending. Shutting down the Blues. And Detroit won game two as Steve Eiserman had a five-point game with two goals and three assists. He had a hat trick in game three, but it was Igor Kravchuk with an assist on the tying goal and a game winner in overtime. And St. Louis won 5-4. And then Wayne Gretzky had the only goal of game four as John Casey provided the 15-shot shutout to even this series. Icing was whistled against Detroit, bringing it all the way back. If you just joined us, Chris Draper here in the second period at 3.05, breaking the long shutout string. Well, Detroit wanted to use their speed in the neutral zone, and Chris Draper, a tremendous play, holding on to the puck, being very patient, getting John Casey to move first, and he puts it in to tie the game. Gretzky wins the faceoff. Al McKinnis has the puck. Plays it toward the net. It hit a skate. Bounces into the crease and is covered by Chris Osgood. Jeff Cortnall was battling Paul Coffey in front. Osgood and Cortnall talk it over. Uh, Osgood and Coffey talking it over. And Steve Eiserman has been the best faceoff man for Detroit in this series, but he lost one there to Gretzky. And Al McKinnis doing the right thing, just trying to get it to the front of the net where Jeff Cortnall was going. Well, the Blues could use some scoring from Jeff Cortnall. Well, they really could. He's still looking for his first goal of the playoffs. He's always been a streaky scorer, but now he's just totally frustrated. Cortnall with the puck. Worked down by Barron. Gretzky lets it go. Cortnall chips it ahead to Hull. Hull checked by McCarty. Coffee. Up the boards, McKinnis stops it, fires, and it's deflected over the top. Bounces down near side boards, where McCarty lifts it clear. Five minutes gone by in the second, tied at one. Coffey, well, a pass intended for Primo, but it was broken up by McKinnis. Back the other way, Jeff Cortnall. Three on two developing as McKinnis joins the play. Shot by Gretzky is blocked by Coffey. By Bergevin, excuse me, that shot by Hull went wide. Gretzky's pass was blocked by Coffey. Back the other way, Slava Kozlov. Barron lining him up. Kozlov cuts in and shoots. Save. Casey, no rebound. And in what was a defensive-minded game in the last minute and a half has opened up for both teams. Getting good scoring chances. Kozlov with the last chance for the Detroit Red Wings. Meanwhile, Cortnall always around the front of the net. Chris Osgood knows he's there. A little bit of a slash. Portnall tries hard to draw penalties, and then Osgood on the last shot. How about Darren McCarty? They hit on Ooh. Fred Hall. He's sandwiched between the two biggest players on Detroit that are on the ice today, Keith Primo and Darren McCarty. Red Wings seem alive, pumped up as they got the goal to tie it. Scoring chances, big edge to Detroit. But they've had very few second chances. Blues have done a good job. Pronger playing it deep into the Detroit zone. Konstantinov drops it off for Fedorov. Lead for Kozlov. Marianov trailing. Kozlov looks across. Back pass to Konstantinov. Out of the zone. That's an offside. Pass was out of the zone. 14.09 to go in the second. Game tied at one. Off the faceoff, puck shot into the St. Louis zone. Deflects off Casey with LaPointe right there. Himalev fires around, then got leveled by Martin LaPointe. Shot behind the net. Kravchuk moves it to Himalev. He's pressured by Rouse. Now by LaPointe. Across to Kravchuk. 
Looks like the Red Wings have picked up their pressure in their fourth check, Joe. They have more energy. They're also controlling the puck a little bit more. They're making good passes coming out of their zone. They're able to come through the neutral zone with some speed, and they're generating scoring chances by carrying the puck over the blue line and getting the opportunity. They've also been a little bit more physical. Oh, what a hit by Martin LaPointe on Yuri Himalev. Here it is here. LaPointe with a tremendous shoulder hit. And then just after that, Draper was involved in one also. Remember, LaPointe started this series on the bench, or in street clothes, I should say. Had an opportunity to play in game two, scored a big goal, and he's been in the lineup ever since. Hits her 3-1 in the second period. Yuri Himalev, 31-year-old Russian player, came over from Buffalo. And Himalev inserted into the lineup in game four. He's played well. Blues scratching Stefan Matteau from the lineup this afternoon. Coffee with a long shot that went wide. Buck around the boards, kept in by Bergevin. Eisenman. Cicerelli back to Eisenman. He's checked by Barron. Primo against McTavish. Puts it out in front. Nobody there for the Red Wings. Mike Hudson sends out Steve Leach. In the Detroit end. Osgood out to stop it. Back up the boards. Played by Steve Leach. Intercepted by Coffey. Quick transition. Here's Heisman. One on one against McKinnis. Joined by Primo. Heisman. His pass smothered by McKinnis. Fires it around the boards. Coffey keeps it in at the line. Around Heisman. Try to get out in front. It's knocked away from him. And cleared out again by the Blues. Well, Heisman had told Keith Primo earlier in the series, don't be so fancy. Just take the shot. That time, I'm sure he was looking to try and set up Primo for his first goal of this series. Barron takes a penalty, wrestled down Dino Cicerelli, and gets a holding call. First penalty of the game for the St. Louis Blues. And now the Red Wings, who have picked up the play in this game, get their first power play chance. We're tied at one. Off the faceoff, Fetisov with the puck. Now Larionov shoots, saved by Casey. The Russian five on for Detroit on their first power play of the game. Konstantinov for Fetisov. Blocked in front by Kravchuk and cleared by Corson. Corson and McTavish with Pronger and Kravchuk for St. Louis. And the Detroit Red Wings won the faceoff in the blue zone from Craig McTavish, and they quickly moved the puck around and had a couple of chances. Moved around the boards. Benaroff is there, blocked. Kravchuk able to clear the zone. Red Wings are six for 32 on the power play in this series. Three of the six power play goals scored by Steve Eisenman. Good takeaway by Corson to clear all the way down. Fetisov for Detroit. 11.35 to go, second period. Game tied 1-1, series tied 2-2. Mariano. And Lidstrom has just come on with Paul Coffey. Larionov shot saved by Casey in the rebound, cleared by Hull. Hull and Gretzky are on for St. Louis with McInnes and Charlie Huddy. And a rare shot from Larionov. Normally, he's looking to set someone up, but Detroit changed things a little bit, sending someone to the front of the net for the deflection or the screen. Primo sets up, plays it around the boards. Primo, Eisenman, and Cicerelli are on. Lidstrom. Huddy able to clear it out for Hull, who's hanging. Hull on the break. Was he across two lines? Yes, he had gone across the red line. Cannot pass the puck across two lines. Hull crossed the second line before the puck did. Well, it was close, but I think the linesman made the right call. Hull tried to hold up, but he had to get ready. He saw the Detroit player coming back on the play, so he was trying to beat him. Good job by St. Louis clearing the zone. And there's Hall floating around out at center ice. Look at him, just waiting for the opportunity. And there he is right there. Watch the right skate. Boy, just over the red line before he was able to control the puck. That's an offside pass, and it comes back in the St. Louis zone for the faceoff. Primo, Eisenman, Cicerelli, Lindstrom, and Coffey on the ice right now on this power play. Eisenman with three power play goals in the series. Lidstrom with one, Bergevin one, and Cicerelli with one. And Detroit shooting much more on the power play. Expect that to continue with both Primo and Cicerelli in particular. They like to hang around the front of the net. Once again, the Blues do a good job of clearing all the way down. Corson and Himalev have come on for St. Louis with Pronger and Kravchuk. 
Lidstrom. Now lets to Eisenman. Quick pass deflected. Pushed ahead by Primo. Chases it down. Gets it to Cicerelli. Off the coffee. Takes the shot. Knocked down by Pronger. Eisenman shoots and is blocked by Pronger. Cicerelli's pass is blocked by Krapchuk. Trying to clear. It's loose. Murray Barrett out of the penalty box. Picks up the puck. Teams are back at full strength. 1-1 the score with 10-15 to go in the second. And Detroit now 0 for 1 on the power play in the game. Right, Checked by Hemelab on Coffey. Lidstrom reverses to Chris Draper, who has the Detroit goal. Bob Airy. Draper to Lidstrom. Lidstrom for Draper, and a good play by Courtnall. This crowd still pretty quiet, but let's not forget, this Detroit team is a confident team. Even though they've been challenged somewhat in this second round, they still have a great deal of confidence in the system that they play and in each other. There's Puck. The point trying to get there. Courtney all able to clear it out. Konstantinov for Detroit. Fired in by Airy. The point moves it around. Airy's pass is blocked and cleared by McInnes. And now this game has gotten back to what we saw in the first period, right in the middle of the period where it got more defensive-minded. There have been spurts where Detroit has used their speed and generated scoring chances, but they didn't have any on that power play. And now we're kind of back to that slow pace, breaking up plays in the neutral zone type of hockey. There's a lead for Kozlov moving in. The backhander stopped by Casey. 22 shots on goal for Detroit, only 10 for St. Louis. This will be an icing on the Blues. 8.43 to go in the second. Tonight, it's a Mother's Day special with a broadcast premiere of Mrs. Doubtfire. Plus, you'll see your favorite stars from Fox and Major League Baseball with their real-life moms. Tonight, at 7 Eastern, 6 Central on Fox. Iserman wins the faceoff. And Detroit has been dominant on faceoffs in this game. Yes, they have. Remember, the Blues are missing Peter Zezel. May be their best faceoff man. Probably is. He's out of the lineup. Mike Hudson back in the lineup tonight to help out. And Hudson racing down. He leads Adam Creighton to the net. Creighton is stopped. What a save. What a save by Osgood. Primo the other way. Pronger checks him. And the crowd on its feet. Save by Chris Osgood. And the chant of Ozzy, Ozzy goes up from the crowd. It looked like Creighton knocked the puck out of midair to allow himself to break in on the breakaway, and he had Osgood beat and could not lift the puck up. The only thing Osgood had left was his stick flat across the goal line, and Creighton could not lift it up. Here it is right here. Creighton knocking down. Watch a couple of moves here. He gets Osgood to go one way. The only thing that was left was his stick, and that's all he needed to make the save on Adam Creighton. Boy, what an opportunity, and what a save. That's called not quitting on a play. Oh, terrific. That's why Osgood was one of the top goaltenders in the league this year, and one of the three finalists for the best in the trophy as the league's best right there. That's tremendous by Chris Osgood. And he played his first road game of the playoffs. In game four, played very well, but was beaten one nothing, and has come back here with another strong effort. Not many chances against him, but that one was a good one, and he came up with a great save. And it's difficult for these goalies that don't face many shots. They have to keep their concentration for long periods of time. Marianoff with a shot. Stick save by Casey. Barron moves the puck up the boards. Konstantinov out there for Detroit. Long shot is blocked. Courtnall trying to clear it was knocked down. It rolls to Kozlov. Big drive is blocked by Courtnall. A lot of shots not getting through. But Detroit is taking more shots. Chance in front blocked again. Kozlov slides it right through the crease. Penalty upcoming on St. Louis. A shot by Fedorov was blocked. And the whistle stops playing a power play coming up for the Red Wings. Time for a Pizza Hut game break. For that, let's go back to Hollywood. JB, take it away. Sam, Joe talked about not quitting. Take a look at Philly's stick-to-itiveness. 
Back end of a two-man advantage on the power play. Peter Svoboda to Eric Lindros. That was Lindros's first shot on goal. He scores. one nothing Flyers. Back to Sam and Joe. Thanks, JB. That series tied at two apiece, and Philadelphia trying to break that tie this afternoon. The winner of that series will play Pittsburgh in the Eastern Conference Final. Cardinal called for holding at 12:44. Detroit's second power play of the game. So many times when you start taking shots at the net, even a lot of times they're not good shots, things happen. There's Cardinal right in front. Look at his left arm. Pulls down Larianoff right there. And Andy Van Helleman, the referee, sees it. John Casey, again, had come out of his net to anticipate the shot from Kozlov. Kozlov held onto it and tried to get the puck back to the front of the net. But that's the thing that Detroit is doing more in this game than they did in game four. Shoot the puck at the net. And that time, it caused them or allowed them to get a power play. Iserman checked by McTavish. Cicerelli. Puck comes loose. Iserman in the corner. And he knocked down hard by Kravchuk. Cicerelli against McTavish again. Kravchuk poking at it with a stick. Iserman trying to work it loose. Cicerelli's got it. Kravchuk swings it up the boards. Kept in by Lidstrom. Kravchuk fires it out. Fedorov, Lidstrom, Iserman, Larionov, and Cicerelli. As Scotty Bowman mis mixes things up here on this power play. Fedorov is playing the point. Iserman's got the puck against McTavish. Corson chases it down. Plays it off the boards and out. Minute 10 to go on the power play. 6.25 to go in the second. Tied at one. Fedorov moves in. Fakes the shot on Pronger. Iserman shoots wide. Larionov holding. Pass across. Finds Primo. The shot went wide. Rebound. Knocked away by Kravchuk. Fedorov's got it. Looking. Coordinate. Blocked by Pronger and he clears. Good play by the St. Louis defense. Better off. Fires in. And somehow Scotty Bowman has to find a way to get some of his top players scoring. They are being shut out again in this game. Fedorov that time, as you mentioned, he had him on the point on the power play. Larry Onoff is shooting the puck more tonight, but not everything is getting through. The only goal by Chris Draper here in the second period. A giveaway to Glenn Anderson, and he's run in too hard by Primo. Konstantinov fires to McCarty. On to Kozlov. He's surrounded. The pass tipped away and cleared by Glenn Anderson. Final seconds of the penalty to Jeff Kortnall. Konstantinov to Kozlov. In with Draper trailing. Behind the net, Darren McCarty. Kortnall's back on. Teams are at full strength. Shot toward the net. Saved by Casey. He reached out at the last second and made the save. I think that shot might have deflected off of Murray Bear and the Blues defenseman. It was a weak looking shot. And as it came back to the point, now in front of the net is Murray Barron. He was right there with the Red Wing player, and John Casey had to be alert. There it is, yes, right off the left skate of Murray Barron. And lucky for the Blues that that, instead of deflecting in, it hit his skate and stopped. And then John Casey was able to just reach over and get it. Casey had one leg going one way, the other leg going the other way, and his left arm a third way. And his stick going right. <laughs> Good job by John Casey, who's made 23 saves this afternoon. 5.07 to go in this second period. Each team 0 for 2 on the power play in the game. Detroit did not have a shot on goal on that last power play. Normally you see deflections like that end up in the net. How many times have we seen it all season long? The Blues uh, get by with one there, and the Red Wings having trouble buying a goal. Bob Airy for Detroit. Long pass for Martin LaPointe left it behind him. Creighton sends it in. Osgood stops it. Red Hull with a goal for St. Louis in the first period. Chris Draper for Detroit here in the second. That's all. As they play the tie-breaking game in this series. Game six will be in St. Louis Tuesday night. And if necessary, game seven would be Thursday night here in Detroit. Tony Quist on for, I believe, his first shift of the game, number 18. I believe you're right. Quist, McTavish, and Steve Leach on for St. Louis. Twist had the tying goal 
in the third period in game three. A shot that got through traffic. Tied the game, went to overtime, and Igor Kravchuk won it early in the over first overtime period. The puck is put up into the crowd, stopping play with 3.53 to go in the second. And Detroit wondering. Where are the goals for the Red Wings? Steve Eiserman has five in this series. Fedorov one, Coffey, Kozlov, Larionov, and throw in Keith Primo with none also. And that's one of the things Scotty Bowman changed in this game, moving Primo up to the wing on the Eiserman line, hoping to get him going. Giveaway, Kravchuk keeps it in. Him 11 to the corner against Bob Rouse. Primo gave it away to Glenn Anderson. Long shot goes wide. Played by McCarty for Detroit. Now it's Primo with Eisenman to the right. Eisenman winds up and shoots high up into the crowd. It goes. Kraftchuk may have gotten a piece of it. Now Chris Draper has scored the only goal for Detroit in this game. It was a beautiful pass by Lidstrom. Now look at the move right here. Fakes, gets Casey to open the legs, and then just slides it through the legs into the empty net. Chris Draper with the only Detroit goal. And that seemed to get this team going a little bit. The crowd got into it. Detroit started playing better. And now the game has settled back into that type of style that St. Louis wants. Defensive-minded. Not much time for Detroit to handle the puck. And to try and play a very patient game. Iserman, McCarty, and Primo for Detroit. McCarty in the corner. Left up there by Murray Barron. Courtnall was pulled down by Iserman. He may have pulled Eiserman down, grabbing hold of a stick. Battle continues along the boards. Eiserman and Courtnall. Eiserman trying to get free. He's got the puck. Can't get out in front. Nice play by McKinnis again. Reached around him. Here's Primo. Fanned on the shot. He pulled it out in front, and it slid off his stick. He missed it. And then Murray Barron, as he was down on one knee, kicked the puck with his right skate out of trouble. Bob Rouse. Now it's Sergei Fedorov. Lost control. McInnes able to work it up the boards to Courtnall. Courtnall taken out of the play by Konstantinov. And the St. Louis zone, they go with 2.45 to go in the second period. Courtnall trying to chip it clear. Blocked by Eisenman. Fedorov turns. He's checked by McInnes. Hard battle along the boards for the puck. Corson comes in chopping at it. And Casey's got it. Popped up into the air. Casey gloved it, shows it to the referee, and gets the whistle. Murray Barron has had a tremendous defensive season for the St. Louis Blues. He is their top hitter, but he also makes defensive plays in front of the net. And on that last chance that Detroit had, Casey had to make one save. This is Primo coming in from around the net. He kind of loses it here. Look at Barron, who's down. Look what he does before Primo can get to it. He kicks the puck up in the air over the blade of Primo's stick so that Primo can't have the chance. That's Head, an excellent play. Heads up play. 2.20 to go in the period. Pronger lifts it out. Rolling puck is stopped by Chris Osgood, and he covers up with Wayne Gretzky right there. We'll step out for a moment. 2.13 to go in the second. Game tied at one. Well, Chris Osgood has seen fewer shots. He had, John to see, Casey. he had to see that one there. That's Good right. save off Brett Hall. But both have been effective. Arianov moves across. Offside on the play. Kozlov. 158 remaining. Almost feel a little nervousness coming up from the crowd. A little restlessness. Oh, absolutely. This crowd is nervous without question. And now Scotty Bowman making another change. He had Primo out on the wing with Larianov and Kozlov. Here's the Brett Hall shot right there. Oh, I thought it actually hit Himalev going across the front of the net. And then Osgood had to cover up on it. Gretzky had won the faceoff back to Hall, and it looked like the puck was rolling on him somewhat. He missed the net. Shoot in by Konstantinov. Hit Gretzky. He's limping a little bit. Trying to stay on. Trying to skate it off. There's Kozlov moving in with it. Poked away by Kravchuk. Orianov tied up by Pronger. Batisov quickly to Konstantinov. Has some room. Shot blocked by Gretzky who got over. Outlets to Hull. Hull moves in on Fatisov. Hull taken down. Two strong men. A little edge and strength to Fatisov on that play. That's a tremendous defensive play by Fatisov. 
Whoa, Hudson sent flying by Fatisa, but Gretzky scores! Wayne Gretzky gives St. Louis a 2-1 lead. A huge check by Fatisov, who had stepped up, but the front of the net was left wide open, and Gretzky came in to score the goal. And Mike Hudson is right here. He starts with the puck. And watch, he'll just leave it, and he'll take this hit, but Brett Hall ends up with it. He sees Gretzky on the other side, and Gretzky has time with Osgood going down. No one could get close to him. There's a tremendous hit, but the puck right on the stick of Hall. And when you have Hall and Gretzky in time, look at Gretzky gets away from Fedorov. Fedorov, remember, won the Selkie Trophy as the league's best defensive player a couple of years ago. He's up for that award again this year. Gretzky gets away from him, Hull spots him, puts it on his stick, and Gretzky gives the Blues the lead. Blues lead for the second time in the game. It's the second goal of the playoffs for Wayne Gretzky, both in this series. Red Hull gets an assist, giving him a goal and an assist in this period. Wayne Gretzky, rather, in the game. Wayne Gretzky also with a goal and an assist in well, the game. What a hit by Fatisov on Hudson. Boy, that hurt going down, but what a great result for Mike Hudson. Mike Hudson with an assist in his first game of the playoffs, 1846 the time, and the crowd is stunned here at Joe Lewis. Less than a minute to go in the period, two to one, St. Louis leading it. Anderson tried to move it, it's kept in by Bob Airy. Comes out to copy for a shot. Saved by Casey through traffic. LaPointe tied up. Barron checks Draper. Casey poked the puck into the corner. Draper trying to twirl away from Barron. Draper can't get out in front as Barron wrote him down. Noonan's got the puck. Corson got away with taking down LaPointe. Van Helman took a look. Let play continue. Corson's got the puck. Drops it back to Noonan, gets it back. Corson to Noonan, couldn't tee it up. Went in with skates, and then Noonan got decked. Corson was knocked down behind the goal line. Five seconds to go in the period. And Pronger sent Primo flying. Shot by McCarty, a save by Casey at the final buzzer of the period. And that was Keith Primo that ran into Corson behind the net and was able to get back up in the play for one of the last chances by Detroit. Well, coming up, JB and Dave will take a look at scores and highlights, get you updated on what's going on in the Stanley Cup playoffs. What's going on here? The Blues lead 2-1, to one, end of two. We'll go back to Hollywood after these messages. You're watching the NHL on Fox. And the big surprise is that there is a Game 5 and that St. Louis is leading Game 5 and threatening to take charge of this series. Led by Wayne Gretzky, who has a goal and an assist. Red Hull, a goal and an assist. And Yuri Himalev has contributed well on that line as well. It's been a good day for this number one line. They provided the offense, making some very key plays. Wayne Gretzky is the greatest player to play the game. He has such high expectations of himself when he doesn't perform to the level that he expects. He struggles, uh, as all people do, and it's surprising for people to hear that, but uh, our responsibility is to continue to support them and make them feel good about their abilities, and I'm sure that they're going to respond accordingly. And they have responded. Yeah, they certainly have. Brett Hull got St. Louis on the scoreboard first after a Detroit turnover. Good play. Here's Himalev here on the boards. Watch him anticipate the pass by Johnson. It ends up on 99 stick, and Brett Hall waited, and he got the perfect pass from Gretzky all kinds of time. He, put, uh, he beat Osgood. And that gave St. Louis a 1-0 lead. And then the Blues took the lead 2-1. Hudson with the play. Hall over to Gretzky, who was got away from Sergei Fedorov on the play. And the perfect pass from Hall to Gretzky breaking in. Gretzky made no mistake. And that's the difference in this game as the Blues lead it 2-1. Red Hall with his fifth playoff goal. And for Wayne Gretzky, with his second playoff goal, now gives him 112 for his career. He leads all players, all time in the playoffs. Second period statistics are brought to you by Bud Ice. 
Wayne Gretzky went off a little early. Seems to be skating fine. Everything points to Detroit should be leading this game. Twice as many shots. Twice as many face-off wins. Scoring twice chances. as many scoring chances. And yet, St. Louis is up 2-1. to one. Yeah, and, and, and you look at this Detroit team, and it just simply just simply does not look like the same team that we have seen that we have seen in the past. Scotty Bowman got to be has to be concerned right now. His favorite team has not come up and the big guns have not been providing the scoring. Great defensive play. You know, we, Joe and I were talking between periods. The four core defensemen for the Blues have done a superb job. They've been tremendous. You know, I think a question that Scotty Bowman might be asking asking himself is, where are the big players? Where are they? Larry Onoff, uh, in particular, Fedorov, uh, not only not scoring, but makes a terrible defensive play on Wayne Gretzky from the neutral zone in that allows Gretzky to score the goal. But he's got to wonder. He's got to be wondering where these big players are and when they're going to step up. They better do it soon. Now, how does St. Louis play this third period, Joe? Oh, they'll, they'll play exactly the same. They'll try and take away the long passes. Remember, Detroit's only goal by Draper was a long pass. They'll try and take that away, not allow any odd man rushes, and keep basically doing the same type of thing. Fedorov leads Kozlov. Drops to Fedorov for the big shot that goes wide. Fedorov drops it off along the boards. Gretzky swings it out of the zone. Around the boards. We welcome the fans who were watching the Philadelphia Flyers and Florida Panthers to Joe Louis Arena. Sam Rosen along with Joe Micheletti. This is the third period just underway. St. Louis leading 2-1. to one. Goals by Fred Hall in the first period. Wayne Gretzky late in the second period. Chris Draper has scored for Detroit. John Casey has had a strong game in goal for St. Louis with 25 saves through two periods. Eiserman across, checked by Noonan, gets a shot off, glove saved by Casey, and he holds on. And two different styles of team. The story in this game, the Blues coming out, playing very defensive-minded, trying to slow down Detroit. They've done that for the most part, even though they have been outshot by the Red Wings 27 to 13 at this point. But John Casey has not had that many difficult saves. Meanwhile, Chris Osgood hasn't faced many shots, and yet, the two opportunities by the Blues, one by Brett Hall, the other one by Wayne Gretzky, directly in front of him with no one defending, and that's what has given them the lead. Going back to the third period of game three of this series, the Red Wings have scored only two goals in the last six periods of play, plus three minutes of overtime. Their top players are not scoring in this series. That's something that has been talked about all series long. Certainly gives St. Louis a great deal of credit for playing a very defensive-minded game and having the ability to slow down Detroit with their speed, with their ability, handling the puck through the neutral zone and creating scoring chances. St. Louis has taken that away from them in this series. Frank McTavish arguing with the linesman on the eviction from the faceoff circle. Heath Primo and Brian Noonan go for the faceoff. Noonan steered it up. But it's stopped by Lidstrom for a shot and no rebound. Casey makes the save. Take a look at the goal scoring in this game. First period, St. Louis on the board first. And this was a play by Yuri Himalev anticipating the pass. It ends up on Gretzky's stick. Brett Hall waiting for it. All kinds of time. He beats Osgood. That makes it 1-0. Surprise goal scorer for Detroit. Chris Draper, a nice move after taking a long pass from Lidstrom. That tied the game. And then... Red Hall with a perfect setup after Mike Hudson was hit. There's Gretzky getting away from Fedorov in front, and Gretzky puts it in, and that's the lead. Kravchuk swings it around the boards. The St. Louis defense has been superb of not giving Detroit second chances. Coffee plays it up the boards for Lidstrom. Pressed by Corson. McCarty trying to clear. It's kept in. Played across to Coffey. Back the other way for Eiserman. Eiserman against Kravchuk. Now McCarty with a shot. Stick to side by Casey. Out the other side comes Primo. Stopped by Casey. McCarty. Loose puck. Noonan gets to it. Clears it down the ice. And this will be an icing on St. Louis. And again, one of the few times Detroit has been able to carry the puck over the Blues' blue line, but those shots are coming from angles, and John Casey is just simply not having much difficulty with those shots from the far sides and from the easy angles. 
St. Louis has played a disciplined game. They've taken only two penalties. Neither team has scored on the power play in the game. And John Casey, who had a horrendous game last week, as did the entire St. Louis team in game two when they were beaten 8-3 here. Casey has been outstanding, and his defense has really helped him out. Sergei Fedorov against Al McInnes. Got his shot off, saved by Casey. And it's played by Adam Creighton. And the puck deflects off Mark Bergevin's glove into the crowd, bringing the face off out of the zone. A little over two minutes gone by in this third period. John, what have you noticed? Uh, John, Joe, what have you noticed about John Casey and the way he's handled himself all week, especially in games three and four? Well, John Casey's a very quiet person that doesn't say too much, but what he has done just by looking at him and watching him play is his confidence level has been raised a few notches. He's making the saves look very, very easy and not panicking, and he has frustrated this Detroit team. Cicerelli was tied up by Kravchuk. Bob Rouse for Detroit. Cicerelli lifts it ahead into the St. Louis zone. Batted out by Chris Pronger. Gershavin with Gretzky on him. Wayne Gretzky now has 15 points in the playoffs. That's tied for fourth highest scoring total. Mario Lemieux leads all scorers with 20 points. And Gretzky has scored points in five consecutive games. And it's fired in front, and a save by Casey off Doug Brown. Blues got careless. Detroit unable to capitalize. Remember we talked about that at the start of the game when John Casey and Osgood leave the net. Bad things happen. John Casey has to come out of his net to make the play. He doesn't realize Dino Cicerelli is going to the other side. A blind pass. And then what a save Casey had to make on Doug Brown as Cicerelli threw it back in front. John Casey with the left leg makes an excellent save on Doug Brown who was trying to tie it up. Boy, right there, tremendous save by Casey. Lidstrom plays it down the boards. As the Red Wings try to keep the pressure on, Barron. Bob Airy with the puck. Checked by McTavish, and the puck intercepted by Al McInnes, who clears the zone. All the way back. Lidstrom pressed by Corson, gets away from him, fires ahead to Coffey. Down the right side goes Draper, three on two across the line. Coffey with a quick shot, knocked away with a blocker by Casey. Noonan swings it around the boards, kept in by Lidstrom. Murray Barron checked by Chris Draper. McKinnis has the puck for St. Louis. That last rush, one of the few times that Detroit has been able to make one pass out of their zone and catch all three Blues forwards. That turned, on to, turned into a four on two, and all Detroit could really muster was just the one shot by Paul Coffey. McKinnis leads Gretzky. Slow down at the line, plays it deep. Himalev goes after it against Fetisov. Larionov stopped by Brett Hull. Konstantinov plays the puck. Gretzky all over him. Now Fedorov knocked down by Hull. Quick shot saved by Osgood. Gretzky tried to set up Himalev. Fetisov takes it away. And the Red Wings come out with it. Fedorov holding. Leaves it for Fetisov to Konstantinov. Moving in. Gets the shot off wide. Around the boards, Fetisov stops it and shoots. Blocked into the corner it goes. Pronger pushes it up the board and clears the zone. Marianov back for it. And sometimes when you're not scoring goals, you start thinking that you have to make a perfect shot and you end up missing the net. That's happened a couple of times. Konstantinov broke through, pulled down, penalty called on St. Louis. And oh, it's a dive. It's on Konstantinov. He's called for diving. Sam, when I was watching that play, I said to myself, as soon as it happened, why did he go down? I think this is the correct call all the way. I don't think there's any question that he decided to take a dive. I was thinking, why would he go down? He had a breakaway. Here it is here. It's not very popular here in Detroit. But look, oh, there's no question. There is no question that, that he took a dive. Now watch the stick on the skate right there. But now he's skating, and he just throws everything. He throws his hands up and just falls straight backwards. That's absolutely the right call. He had a breakaway to tie this game and instead tried to draw the penalty. 19,983 Detroit referees disagree with Andy Van Halen. <laughs> and me, but that's okay. 
That was that was absolutely the right call. Here it is again. There's Kravchuk. Now watch him. He's striding. He just decides to go off balance and fall backwards to try and draw the draw the penalty. He must have felt that there was another Blues player coming the other way that would have defended against him. Maybe, you know, he just didn't realize that he had a breakaway to tie the game. Konstantinov called for unsportsmanlike conduct. Diving at 451. Blues' third power play of the game. They're 0 for 2. 2-1, to 1, St. Louis leading it. 14.50 to go in the third period. Series even, two games apiece. Bob Rouse, Red Hall moves it up the board to Chris Pronger. Across to Al McInnes. Now Gretzky. Gretzky, Holland, Corson, shot by McInnes, saved by Osgood through the screen of Corson. The rebound is still loose, and out comes Rouse. Back is McInnes. Gretzky stays with Eiserman. Rouse shoots, stick saved by Casey. Eiserman plays the puck, takes a hit from Pronger. Good work by the penalty killing unit of Detroit. Doug Brown after it in the corner. Pronger picks it up with 105 to go on the power play for St. Louis. Hull across to Courtnall, drops it off to Gretzky. Good interception by Brown, and he clears. Beautiful play by Doug Brown. Casey moves it aside. Brown goes sliding in to kick it deeper. Moved up the boards. Given away, Coffey shoots wide. Excellent penalty killing shift by the Red Wings. Taken back by Federal. Now Coffey. Red Wings have controlled the puck on the St. Louis power play. They've had the better chances. Brett Hall nearly had an opportunity on a rebound, but twice Detroit came down the ice and had good chances. McTavish with the puck. The checking center on on the final seconds of the power play, but offside is whistled against St. Louis. Well, the initial shot comes from Al McInnes at the point. Now in front, you'll see a pileup. Corson is there where he always is. Now watch Brett Hall. He'll come into your picture and try and take the Blues puck. Right there is Hall. He can't get out. Then he'll get cross-checked before he can get the shot off. Iserman, and that allowed Detroit to come back the other way. Hall with a good opportunity as four Blues players were in tight. Detroit came back the other way, and Wayne Gretzky raced out of the Detroit zone to turn a two-on-one into a two-on-two. Lariano for Detroit, and he sends it all the way down. This is the kind of penalty killing shift which could give the entire Detroit team a lift. It's been very, very strong. Chris Pronger. No! Osgood lets it go to Rouse. Teams are at full strength as Konstantinov returns. St. Louis 0 for 3 on the power play in the game. But the Blues still lead 2 to 1 with 13 minutes to go in the third. Give away to Creighton, who sends it deep into the Detroit zone. Karam's off the partition out in front, but Larianov is there. Strange bounce off the partition in the glass. And Osgood was behind the net, but nobody was in front for St. Louis. Osgood out to play the puck. That could have put Detroit in a real hole down two goals late in this game, just 12 and a half minutes to go. Larianov moves in. Pass deep was blocked. Kozlov couldn't play it. McInnes clears it out for St. Louis. Well, as you said, Joe, anytime Osgood or Casey go out, strange things happen. That time the puck bounced in front. I'm sure Mike Keenan sent a message to one of his defensemen to tell John to stay in the net. <laughs> Slava Petisov for Detroit. Cicerelli pushing it ahead. McKinnis stops it. Petisov back for it. Glenn Anderson bearing down on him. And now the Blues... Sending in one four checker for the most part, and they got all kinds of players back. Big shot by Fedorov, good save by Casey, and it was cleared aside on the rebound. Barron sends it out. Red Wings have had, by our count, through two periods, only two rebound shots on John Casey. There's Cicerelli across, winds up, another big shot, close save by Casey, and he gathers this rebound. 11.37 to go in the third, Casey holding on. Detroit coming out of their zone. Look at what they have to look at. Four Blues players all back, a fifth one on their way. That's what they're going to have to deal with in the last 11 and a half minutes. Red Wings win the face off. The shot deflects wide of the net. Murray Barron for St. Louis plays it off the glass. Kept in by Doug Brown. Better off can't control, then got knocked down by Barron. Sent back in by Brown. And Al McInnes takes over. Detroit 
out shooting St. Louis by a huge margin, 33 to 15. The only game that St. Louis outshot Detroit in this series was game one, and that's when Osgood was superb in goal. What a series this has been for Al McKinnis, and what a game. We started off at the start of this game. He had a couple of excellent defensive plays, and McKinnis, the veteran, of course, he won the Conn Smythe Trophy back in 89 as the MVP in the playoffs. Always known for his shot. Not a lot of people gave him much credit for his defensive ability, but he's been very strong in this game today. Yes, he has. That core of four defensemen, McKinnis, Barron, Pronger, and Kravchuk have been outstanding for St. Louis. Remember, Kravchuk's job was taken away from him by Charlie Huddy. In the first two games of this series, Kravchuk had missed three games in the Toronto series because of an injury, came back, and he didn't, he couldn't get back in the top four, and eventually he did, and he's been very strong. Play was whistled dead for a hand pass. Next Sunday, it's time for the conference finals. We may be in the East, we may be in the West. Will it be Detroit, St. Louis, Colorado, Chicago in the West? We know it'll be Pittsburgh, one of the teams in the East. 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific. Stanley Cup playoffs continue on Fox. Long shot by Kravchuk, stopped by Osgood, no rebound. 10.54 to go, third period. And St. Louis leading. Two to one with a series even. The Blues trying to take the upper hand. They're only one and four on the road in the playoffs. They were a good road team in the regular season, but in the playoffs, only one and four. They were better on the road during the regular season. They were 500, 17, 17, and seven, but at home, just 15, 17, and nine. And they only allowed eight goals in those five home games. Florida's come back to tie. Philadelphia 1-1 in the third period, and the Blue score! The St. Louis Blues score, and maybe Shane Corson getting the goal to give them a 3-1 to one lead. The bench is up, and that puck went through Chris Osgood. Right off the faceoff, and Detroit has dominated faceoffs in this game. Corson ends up with the goal. Now off the faceoff, here it is. The defenseman's right back there. The puck will come back to him by Corson. That's Kravchuk will just wait. Corson, we talked about his ability to deflect it. He deflects it right through a maze of players, including through the legs of Chris Osgood, and that makes it three to one. Corson wins the faceoff. Anderson helps him out, and then Corson is able to get his stick on the shot by Kravchuk. And now the Red Wings have a long way to come back. It's a two-goal lead for the Blues. Three to one with 10.35 to go in the third. Glove saved by Casey on the shot by McCarty. Excuse me, the shot by LaPointe. Here it is again. There's the shot on Fox tracks, and you can see the deflection, how it changes the angle. Right there, that might have gone off Yuri Himalev, who was there as well. That's the goal, Joe. Yuri Himalev gets credit for the goal. He has a goal and an assist in the game. His first playoff goal for the Blues, Kravchuk and Glenn Anderson get the assist at 9-11. The Blues with a goal in each period. Now lead three to one. Bob Airy with a shot to flex across. Gretzky trying to clear. Bounces down and it's kept in by a hustling play by LaPointe. He may have been clipped by the stick of Al McInnes. LaPointe went down. He stays in the play now. Now he heads to the bench. Looked like he may have taken a stick in the face. Bergevin knocked down McTavish. The puck going all the way back is played by Bob Rouse. Midway point, third period, 3-1 St. Louis. Now for Detroit, they have got to have their defensemen get involved in the offense. They've got to move up on the play and start taking some chances because they're just not getting many scoring chances by their forwards. Pronger clearing the front of the net. Konstantinov. Ariano for the puck. Heads in. Drops it off for Fetisov going deep. Pass in front, miss. Shot by Kozlov. He scores! Some beautiful passing by Lariano and Fetisov. Set up Slava Kozlov for his first goal of this series. 
And now it's a three to two game. Well, this turns out to be a four and four, but watch the defenseman Fatisov move up on the right wing. Right there, he's got the puck. He holds on to it. He throws it back. It's just a flex. And Kozlov there is able to fire it as John Casey was going down. But there's the defenseman moving on the offense. That's Fatisov. He tries to throw it in front. It deflects off a couple of people. John Casey, who was going down, gets bumped into. Watch Casey get bumped right here. And he's on his way down, and the puck by Kozlov up high, and that pulls Detroit back to within a goal at 3-2. Mm, quite a shot by Kozlov. Excellent shot by Kozlov for his first goal of the series. It's a 3-2 game. The crowd alive once again as the Red Wings answer back a minute and 12 seconds after the Himalayan goal by St. Louis. Kozlov to Primo. Primo got a shot off. Great chance by Primo. Great effort by Keith Primo. And Casey makes the save. And a good save by Casey. But suddenly this Detroit team, as we saw earlier when they scored their goal, they come right back with a great deal of energy. Primo big and strong on his backhand with his back to the goal was able to get a pretty good shot off on John Casey. Here's the goal again. That's the defenseman Fatisov. Now watch the puck deflect. All kinds of traffic in front of John Casey and a terrific shot by Kozlov to bring Detroit back to within a goal at 3-2. Kozlov's fourth playoff goal from Larianov and Fatisov at 10-23. A minute 12 after the Himalayan goal has made it 3-1. It's back to a one-goal game. Cicerelli left it. Hall able to... No, couldn't clear. Shot by Lindstrom, tipped wide. Good hit by Pronger, knocked down Cicerelli, and he's away with the puck. Here's Brett Hall, four on two St. Louis. Gretzky to Hall. Hall shoots high, missed the net. Around the boards, Eisenman knocks down McTavish. Coffey chases down the rolling puck. Cicerelli tips it clear. Federal pushes it ahead. Two on one. Coffee across the line against Pronger. Poke checks it away. Eiserman fell down trying to hold the blue line so he wouldn't go offside. Wiped out a two on one. Eiserman, it went off McTavish and Casey covers up in the crease. And again, Paul Coffey, we talked about the defenseman moving up on the play. Fatisov did it the first time. Paul Coffey the second time and Detroit nearly ties it. The face-off, Casey makes another save. And the puck deflected up into the crowd. We get a face-off. 8.33 remaining in the third. John Casey has faced 38 shots and made 36 saves. And Detroit has been dominant on the face-offs in this game with the exception of the Blues' third goal that Shane Corson was able to win. But he lost the last one to Draper. And Detroit again able to get another scoring chance. Hall, Gretzky, and Himalev have scored for St. Louis. Draper and Kozlov for Detroit. The faceoffs in this game, 37 for Detroit, 22-1 by St. Louis. Wow. Draper against Corson. And McTavish was thrown out first. He wants him first, but now he's got Corson out there as well. We'll see McTavish often in this third period. Pronger to the puck. Up the boards, kept in. Bergevin's shot went off of the point. Pronger trying to clear, kept in by Rouse. Pronger pulled down in the corner by Draper. Draper is taken down by Kravchuk. There's a penalty upcoming. It's going to be on Draper. He pulled down Pronger in the corner, and Andy Van Helman saw it and called it. After the play went into the corner, Draper in there. There it is right there. Now, this is long after the play. Draper and Pronger. Draper takes him in late and then throws him down. And Andy Van Helleman, instead of watching the puck, was watching behind him. He made the call, and Draper will go off. Boy, what a tough call for Detroit at this point in the game, trailing by a goal with just 8.18 to go. Update. Let's go to JB. 
And Sam, this Florida Panthers squad refuses to fold. Take a look at them in the red jerseys here. Dave Lowry with a pass to Stu Barnes. He turns right around and shoots it. Dale Howardchuk was screening Ron Hextall. He didn't see it. We're all tied at one in the third. Let's take it back to Sam and Joe. Thanks, JB, for that Pizza Hut game break. Great game in Philadelphia. Terrific game here. Draper called for roughing at 11.42. St. Louis fourth power play of the game. They've had three shots on the power play. They are 0 for 3. McKinnis and Pronger. Gretzky, Hall, and Corson for the power play. Hall to Gretzky. McKinnis to Gretzky. Corson holding back. Gretzky turns. Pass tipped across to Pronger. Now to McKinnis. Takes the shot deflected by Fedorov into the crowd. Fedorov, Brown, Lidstrom, and Konstantinov, the penalty killing unit for Detroit. Last time St. Louis had the power play, Detroit totally controlled the play. Well, they've got such great talent. They've been outstanding all season long in the penalty killing department, along with a few other departments as well. But Mike Keenan, I'm sure, has told his power play unit Make sure you get the shot through if you're going to take it and watch out for the offensive ability of the wings. That's what's coming up. Definitely game six in St. Louis, if necessary, game seven back in Detroit Thursday night. And St. Louis is undefeated on home ice. Five and oh in the playoffs on home ice. And playing with just a tremendous amount of confidence. They think even strength that they can beat this Detroit team and no one's been able to do it nearly all season for Detroit. They've really got to be shot. Corson pass intended for Hull. Taken off the boards. Red Wings come out. Konstantinov fires down. 7.15 to go in the third. 55 seconds to go in the power play for the Blues who lead 3-2. to two. Hull fires in. Off the stick of Osgood. Brown knocked down by Pronger. Gretzky and Hull. Blocked by Doug Brown. Knocked down by Hull. Coffee tries to clear. He does. McInnes has it in center. Hull tied up by Coffee. Pronger gets to the puck and sends it in. The problem for the Wings, even though they're doing a good job of killing off the penalty, the clock keeps ticking down and they're slowly running out of time. McInnes and Brown go for the puck. Pronger has it. Ten seconds to go in the Blues power play. It leads to Gretzky. Gets it through to Kortnall. Knocked away by Konstantinov and cleared out by Petisov. Here is Kozlov with Larianov. Kozlov against Barron. Barron blocked the pass. Larianov was taken out of the play. And Gretzky's got the puck. Teams are back at full strength. St. Louis, perfect penalty killing. Four for four. Six minutes remaining in the third. 3-2 St. Louis. Fired across. Petisov playing it deep. Kravchuk setting it around. Kozlov took a hit from Kortnall. McTavish was tripped up. Here's Noonan with the puck. Sending it deep into the Detroit zone. Blues are 0 for 4 on the power play in the game. Red Wings are 0 for 3. The Blues lead 3 to 2. The go ahead goal right now. The game winner, the lead goal, scored by Yuri Himalov on the deflection. Here's Gretzky breaking in. Holds up. Finds the trailer. Conger shoots. Save made. Might have been blocked by Konstantinov, who went down. That's a tremendous play. Paul Coffey had moved up on the plate, taking the chance to go on the offense, and the Blues turned it back the other way. Steve Eisenman in. Goes deep against Pronger. Pronger with a long reach. Eisenman centers. Kravchuk broke it up. Lidstrom shoots blocked by Kravchuk. Under five minutes to go in the third. And the puck lifted up into the crowd by Kravchuk. Stops play. 4.56 remaining in the third. The Blues trying to hold on to the one-goal lead. Tonight, it's a Mother's Day special with a broadcast premiere of Mrs. Doubtfire. Plus, you'll see your favorite stars from Fox and Major League Baseball with their real-life moms tonight at 7 Eastern, 6 Central on Fox. Shane Corson going after the puck against Nicholas Lidstrom. Now it's Craig McTavish. Knocked away from him. Federal for Detroit. Sends out Eiserman. 4.35 to go on the third. 3-2 St. Louis leading it. Fired around the boards. Cicerelli. 
against McTavish. Now it's Lidstrom. Pronger checks Iserman. Coffee is deep. Iserman's got the puck. Fedorov shoots wide. Cicerelli to the rebound. Coffee is in deep. Trying to play the puck against Noonan. Cicerelli gets it to Iserman. Lines it around. Noonan gets there in front. Paul Coffey is down. And Andy Van Helman blows the whistle to stop play. Paul Coffey down, injured on the play. Well, he either got hit by the stick of Igor Kravchuk or by the stick of Dino Cicerelli directly in front of John Casey. Kravchuk had turned to take Cicerelli out, who tried to get directly in front of John Casey when Detroit had control of the puck. And as he was doing that, I believe it was an errant stick that caught Paul Coffey as he was going from behind the net to the front of the net. Oh, Coffey is cut, shaken on the play. Let's see. Now here's in front. There's Cicerelli, 22, and here's Coffey coming in the other way. Look at Kravchuk. Oh, oh that's, that's the stick of Cicerelli. Yeah. Cicerelli brought his stick up to try and brace himself against Kravchuk, and he ended up clipping Paul Coffey. Here it is here. Watch the blade of Cicerelli's stick or the shaft. Boy, he caught him hard on the nose. And Coffey still down on the ice. Here it is here. The stick. Coffey is looking at the puck so he doesn't notice Cicerelli's stick. And he catches it high on the nose. The Blues still lead it. The Red Wings were appealing for a penalty on St. Louis, but Andy Van Helman said no, and that's the right call. Well, we showed on the replay the excellent replay that it was Cicerelli stick all the way and he absolutely made the right call now he's going back to talk to Scotty Bowman one more time of course Scotty Bowman didn't agree with the call nor did nor did Paul Coffey but again Paul Coffey was looking at the puck he didn't realize it was Cicerelli stick that hit yeah, him see how badly he's cut and he's shaking on the play but I believe Andy may have gotten, he skated over to the official scores table. He may have gotten a call from upstairs confirming that there was no penalty on the play. And there you see, it's clearly Dino Cicerelli's stick that catches Paul Coffey on the bridge of the nose. They're having to do a lot of work on Paul Coffey. He stays on the bench. Now he's back standing on his skates as they're scraping up a lot of the blood that Paul Coffey lost on the way to the bench. 3.59 remaining in this third period. St. Louis Blues getting goals from Brett Hull, Wayne Gretzky, and Yuri Hemelev. Hemelev has played with, the, with Gretzky and Hull, and when he scored the goal, he was on with Corson at the time. He's been out there quite a bit against his Russian counterparts, and he was benching after the game. After game four, he was saying, they expect you to chase the puck. I know they want me to do that, but I won't. So I stay in position, and he's done a very good job defensively against that unit. 3-2, St. Louis leading it. Fetisov drives it in. Fired around the boards by Hemelev. Red Hull is there. Kozlov on him. Hemelev tries the other side. No opening. Plays it off the glass. Stopped by Fetisov. Walking in, is shot blocked by Himalev. Gretzky controls. Gretzky with Hull to his left. He dumps it in the Detroit zone. Three and a half minutes to go in the third. Slava Kozlov, who has one of the two Detroit goals, the other by Chris Draper. The Blues have done a great job on the big scorers of Detroit. Interception made by Courtnall. He races across. He shoots saved by Osgood. Buck kept alive, Fetisov outlets to Larionov. Fetisov back in his own zone. Clears it out. LaPointe was stopped. McCarty swept aside. LaPointe's got it. His pass was blocked. LaPointe trying to find it again. Cleared out by Newton. 2.50 to go on the third. Igor Kravchuk moving in. He shoots deflected and sticked aside by Osgood. And Osgood looks a little bit hurt in the Detroit crease. He was run into by Jeff Courtnall after Courtnall took the shot. Paul Coffey is back on the ice. Outlet pass. LaPointe stopped by Pronger in center. Anderson stopped the puck. Pronger lifts it into the Detroit end. Racing for it. Himalev. He shoots. Save made by Osgood. Anderson winds it deep with 2.20 to go on the third. 
Martin LaPointe. Lidstrom gave it away to Anderson, and he ran into Lidstrom with his fist. He lifted his glove, put it right in the face of Nicholas Lidstrom. Van Helleman right there did not make a call. Coffey's got the puck. For Iserman, stopped at the line, passed to Fedorov. Offside, Detroit with a minute 56 remaining in the third. I think Andy missed one there. It was directly in front of him. And this is Glenn Anderson. Watch his hands. And this is Lidstrom. Look at the hands come up. The forearm knocks Lidstrom down. And Lidstrom couldn't believe the non-call as Anderson got the hands up. Lidstrom goes down. And meanwhile, there's, there's Osgood right there. That was Courtnell after he took the shot. He went behind Osgood, and Osgood was backing up. Portnall knocked him down, and you could tell it was somewhat off balance. It came down. I'm not sure if he came down on a knee or if it just stunned him momentarily. Konstantinov shoots wide. A minute 50 remaining in the third. 3-2 St. Louis. Cicerelli in the corner. Moved up the boards by McInnes, who is blocked. Murray Barron takes it. Gretzky, Corson, and Hall on for St. Louis now. Eisenman drives it in. Bounces down behind the goal line, rolls to the far side, and Barron gets there. Thorson able to clear the zone. Hull is open, racing to the puck. He gets there, he shoots at a save by Osgood. Good save by Chris Osgood. Back the other way, Steve Eiserman, lead to Fedorov, back to Eiserman. Moves around Himalab. Centering pass for Fedorov, hit the outside of the net, try to back it in, save by Casey. Coffey comes down. Coffey looking. In front, it goes all the way through. Fedorov has it. One minute to go in the third. 3 to St. Louis. Himalev comes out. Osgood could not get out of the net to the bench for an extra skater. Fedorov tied up by McTavish. Good effort by Craig McTavish. He goes down on the play. Larianov takes over with 45 seconds. Stopped by Pronger. Plays it deep into the Detroit end. Lidstrom moves it up for Larianov. He's checked by McTavish. Kozlov almost lost it to Kortnall. Breaks out. Osgood to the bench. 30 seconds to go. Coffey moves in and shoots. Saved by Casey. No rebound. 28.3 seconds remaining. And St. Louis leading 3-2. And a good chance by Paul Coffey. How many times have we seen him come down the off wing and use the forehand shot to score goals? And again, John Casey was there to make the big save. At the end of the game, Joe and I will select the Chief Eagle player of the game. Well, there have been a few of them. There's, here's Fedorov right here. Once, twice, you can see Casey was down. The first time, Fedorov tried to bank it in off one of his pads. The second time, on the back end, he tried to go high and could not beat John Casey there either. 36 saves for Casey and 18 blocked shots. It's been an outstanding defensive effort a lot of pressure from the Red Wings, but Al McInnes, Igor Kravchuk, Murray Barron, Chris Pronger have done a great job. I could lump them into one group as player of the game, or maybe John Casey. What do you think? John Casey, there's been a, a number of players that have played well for St. Louis, and Sam, you saw in the Pittsburgh New York Rangers series what happened when the big players went against each other. Yager and Lemieux were spectacular in that series. They won the series. In this game, the big line of Gretzky, Hull, and Himalev have done all the damage. Yes. And again, Detroit continues to struggle offensively. Larionov, no goals. Kozlov scored his first of the series in this game this afternoon. Keith Primo still has not scored a goal in the series. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Hockey League, intended for the private use of our audience. Any publication rebroadcast or the use of the pictures, descriptions that account for this telecast, including the imposition of a charge for viewing it without the express written consent of the National Hockey League, is prohibited. 28.3 seconds remaining, third period. Detroit fans are nervous. Their team could go down three games to two in this Western Conference semifinal and face an elimination game Tuesday night in St. Louis, where the Blues have not lost in the playoffs. The Blues are 28.3 seconds away from taking the lead in this series. And the all-important face-off. Detroit has dominated in this game, but Craig McTavish will take this face-off against Keith Primo. 
Detroit net is empty. They have six skaters on. The battle for the puck. It's still loose. Primo trying to find it. McTavish looking for it. McKinnis trying to stop it. It's still loose. Primo roughing up McTavish. The whistle stops play. 20.2 seconds on the clock. What a face-off. Two strong players. McTavish very good. Keith Primo, 220 pounds. Tries to, they just simply try to out-muscle each other, and they both ended up straight down on the ice. Primo's trying to win the face-off back to Paul Coffey, who is stationed on right defense. And then Detroit will send everyone to the front of the net. Another face-off, another stay a quick shot, a save, and the rebound went wide. Casey made a save on the quick shot. Lindstrom shot is blocked. 12 seconds to go. Coffey with the puck, his shot is blocked. The Blues clear the puck toward the empty net, and it's just wide. The race for the puck, it's an icing. Two, 1.7 seconds on the clock. Time for one last face-off. And I think if Brett Hall had another chance to do it over, he probably would have gone off the sideboards or lifted it softly into the neutral zone. Here's the face-off again. There's one chance. Look at this chance right there by Darren McCarty. The puck was bouncing, and he didn't get much on the shot. There's an excellent save by Casey. McCarty has a chance and misses it. And then he falls on top of Casey, and who comes over? Chris Pronger comes over to help him out. But Brett Hall had a chance. Now they put a few more tenths of a second back on the clock, so there will be one more opportunity for Detroit. As I mentioned, Brett Hall had a chance just inside his own blue line. He went for the empty net goal, or maybe he was just hurried. He felt he was hurried to try and get the puck out of the zone, and he ended up taking an icing call. So one more important faceoff for both these two teams. Now they put eight tenths, another eight tenths of a second on the clock. They're going over to check it. They do have running time upstairs. There's 2.9 on the clock. Scotty Bowman will take as many as he can get right now. Well, with 2.9 seconds, you have to win the faceoff almost cleanly and get the shot off right away. There's obviously not much time to handle the puck and to make a pass. You have to win it and then get the shot to the goal. Shane Corson, Craig McTavish will stay on the ice for St. Louis. The Detroit Red Wings have to be wondering what is going on here. Everyone up on both benches. Craig McTavish, the man who took the final face off in the Stanley Cup Championship seventh game for the New York Rangers. Here to take a huge face off against Keith Primo. 2.9 seconds on the clock. It's loose, no shot, the game is over. The St. Louis Blues have defeated the Detroit Red Wings three to two and lead the series three games to two. What a stunning turnaround in this series. The Blues have now won three in a row. The Blues, the team that finished two games under 500 in the regular season, lead the team that set an NHL record for wins in the regular season with 62. And our new Dodge, or make that the Jeep Eagle player of the game, is John Casey. Jeep and Eagle, proud to donate $1,000 to John Casey's name. Yeah, in his name for the Amateur Hockey Association of his choice, John Casey, 37 saves, but his defense helped out blocking shots and clearing rebounds. So now, the Blues with a chance to win this series at home Tuesday night. You talked about a stunned crowd. This place is quiet. What a performance by John Casey and the Blues, and Detroit is on the brink of elimination. Blues three. Red Wings 2 will be back in just a moment. It's hurting. The Red Wings are on the brink of elimination. They were looking for the tying goal, but John Casey found the way to stop Sergei Fedorov. Two saves by Casey, who made 37 in the game, and frustration and heartbreak for the Red Wings. The Blues take a 3-2 lead in the series back home to St. Louis for Game 6 Tuesday night. The final score, the Blues three, the Red Wings two. For Joe Micheletti, this is Sam Rosen saying so long from Joe Louis Arena in Detroit, where Wayne Gretzky had a goal and an assist. Adds did.
Brett Hull as the Blues won it three to two. Again, everybody, happy Mother's Day. A lot happier now. I'm Pete Peterson. Welcome to the Blues post-game live show, everybody. The Blues winning game five of their Western Conference semifinal series with Detroit. Three to two. Let's go very quickly now. We'll introduce Bernie Federko, but first, let's go right to Detroit. And Lou Tevlin standing by with Mike Keenan. Louie? Thanks, Pete. What a remarkable come from the dead almost uh, from a one week. Mike Keenan, how do you account for such a drastic turnaround? Well, we were able to regroup in uh, Monday and Tuesday before our third game. Played really well defensively, and John Casey's been the man of the hour, no question about it. Uh, we tried to keep the shots to the outside, and, and uh, he's been able to handle those, and we've been able to find ways to score goals. Wayne Gretzky's been the big difference for us, scoring the uh, the single goal in the last game in St. Louis, and then he was in on the first two here tonight, so he's had a, a great uplifting feeling for the team. The one thing that comes to my mind is discipline, both in not taking uh, unnecessary penalties and killing the penalties of uh, the power play their wings have. Well, that's a key to this series. We thought it was going to be a Our discipline had to be there. You go home to St. Louis, you haven't lost in the postseason yet? Well, we'll have to have a, a real good game plan ready because it's a real tough team. We're playing with a great record and proud, proud franchise. And All right, Lou, thanks a lot. Apparently, we have some Detroit technicians working up there. But uh, I tell you what, what a game it was. We'll take a look at the highlights of Game 5 in just a second and go back to Joe Louis Arena for more reaction. But first, let's introduce Bernie Federko once again, uh, Blues all-time great. And first of all, Bernie, all you got to say is wow to this. Somehow they have put together the right combination. They've gotten the job done and found out the magic that it takes to beat a record-setting team. They've won three straight, something nobody has done all season long against Detroit. No, Pete, they played very well, and what they've done is they've checked very well. You know, they didn't give up a lot of chances uh, against so whether they had the Red Wings had 39 shots. I don't care. They were from outside. John Casey could see the puck for the most part, and because of that, uh, they did very well, and uh, they capitalized on their shots. The one the chances that they got, it was Brett Hull, it was Wayne Gretzky, and those are the two guys that have to score. And on the other hand, Detroit's big guns are not scoring, so that's the big difference in the game. All right, let's go ahead and move to the highlights, pick it up in the first period. And once again, we talked about this guy right here, John Casey. What a game. He has continued to gain uh, all sorts of confidence as this series goes on. The big wraparound right there, shutting him out. That's primo right there. And 5-15 to the first, Yuri Hemelev steals it away at the blue line, gives it to Gretzky, to Hull, who's camping out. What a beautiful goal to put the Blues up one zip early. Well, first, a big mistake by Detroit. But again, Gretzky knows where Hull is. He just dumped it at the front of that. And Brett, when he gets one-on-one -on, -one on the goal, you know what he knows what to do. And he puts it, buries it high. Hull's second goal of the series, fifth of the playoffs. Other end, Casey at it again. Kozlov with the backhander. Casey with 13 first-period saves. And a little bit later, he stops Chris Draper, but watch Martin LaPointe poke away at Casey in there. Whistle blows, but he keeps on poking, and referee Andy Van Helleman letting him play, which was a bit of an advantage, I think, for the Blues, because that's the kind of game they wanted to play today. That's right, Pete. Uh, they uh, know Andy's not going to call much, and here he just, LaPointe just keeps poking away. Andy blew the whistle in time, and that puck went in. You'll see it here going on the really the third whack, but the whistle goes about here. And now it's uh, no chance of, of that goal counting. Only two penalties called in the entire first period, both of them against Detroit. And I think that goes back and speaks well to the Blues' experience. They're not taking dumb penalties early on, and they get the early one to nothing lead. Well, I think that's the key, Pete. This is a disciplined veteran hockey club. And when they're doing what they're doing, and that's by not taking penalty, they don't get the talented uh, scores that Detroit has to get that extra advantage. And uh, that's something that they did well tonight again. They did it in the last two games. And we all know what the results are when you check the, uh, the superstars in the league. And the Blues did a real fine job with that. All right, so the Blues hold down a one to nothing lead as they head into the second period. And they come out not quite as aggressive, I think, as we saw in the first period. And it looked like the Red Wings began to get into rhythm. Casey getting peppered by McCarty. And then Iserman on the rebound. Well, here they, they did. You know, the Wings have got the kind of team that's going to keep coming at you. And here John makes one save. The rebound comes kind of gets away from him here. But Iserman's coming in, but both. Uh, the block shot and Casey going down to smother the puck. 
But after more than 103 minutes of scoreless hockey, the Wings finally strike Lidstrom across ice to Chris Draper. Casey comes way out, and the octopi are flying again, and it's tied at 1-1. Great cross-ice pass. There. Well, that's the key to this whole hockey club is their defense moves the puck so well here. And uh, once Draper gets it, he makes a real nice move here on John Casey, uh, fakes his shoulder, and then what he does is John opens up those legs and uses the fake, and he just slides it through, and that's a, that's a real good goal. So we're tied at 1-1 later in the period. Adam Creighton would get a great chance. All alone, Osgood absolutely stoning him, getting his paddle behind him and stops Creighton from a big score there. Well, that's an unbelievable save here. I think uh, Creighton did everything right here. He faked him, he went to his forehand, and he wasn't able to get it up. And that's what happens when you're outstretched here. But again, Osgood with a fine save, he puts his stick down and just corrals it before he could get across the line. And then Detroit defense is back to clear it here. You'll see a uh, tremendous save. And there's a the Detroit guy right there to pick up the puck, though. Battle on both ends in that case. He continues to hold him out as well from the point. And this one goes off. Barron nearly goes in. And once again, John Casey with some great vision to hold that one out. And he has to do that. We all remember what happened in the Toronto series. That goal went in against the Blues. But with about a minute 10 left, you saw it. Mike Hudson giving up his body and the puck to Hulley. Then to Gretzky, who gets away from Fedorov. And that was a key. Look at Mike Hudson give it up to Hull. And then back across to Gretzky. What a play to make it 2-1. Well, that's as pretty as you can see, Pete, uh, you know, the, to take your body to make the play here. And, Brett, what a beautiful pass here. And once Gretzky gets past Fedorov, he knows what to do. Osgood is sliding here. Again, this is a perfect pass here. And Wayne knows what to do. Osgood's down again, right top shelf. That's a beautiful goal. Nice to see it once again from the great one. Uh, his second goal of the playoffs, he had a goal and an assist today. So it looks like the guys they need to start producing are doing it. So a goal from Hulley and Gretzky for the first time in the playoffs make it 2-1 to one after two. Well, Pete, they're the key to this hockey club. You know, when Wayne or Brett are scoring, especially if they're scoring in the same game, uh, the team's going to win. And when this happens, uh, we all saw today, Gretzky came alive the other night uh, in game four, scored the lone goal. And tonight, both Brett and, and Wayne were there when they needed the most. And uh, both of them cash in, and the difference in the game, really, with both of them scoring. And the confidence continues to build. The Blues 2-1 after two periods. And then, of course, we know how well the Russians can dive in the Olympics. But watch how they dive here at the hockey rink. Konstantinov looks like he was shot. Nobody within five feet of him. It didn't work for the Russians. Konstantinov gets called for the dive. Unbelievable. You'd think Fedorov would be out there. Well, that's right. And that's a new rule that's been put in to try not to sh uh, you know, show up the referees. And Danny and even Helm, an older referee, wasn't going to let this happen. And usually that nothing, there's no call here. But that new rule's in there, and he paid for it. Blues get the insurance goal off the faceoff. Yuri Hemelov deflects it in off a crab chuck shot from the point to give the blues a 3-1 lead and we would find out in about a minute this was an important goal yes it was here just a shot because the blues won a face off and they didn't win that many today pete but this one was one that was a big one and it goes in off him left skate i believe and right through the pads of, of osgood and um, gave the blues a two one a three two goal lead red wings russians get one back some sweet passing finished off by kozlov out in front and Really, Casey, without a chance on this one, some good passing and some good breaks. They got a lot of breaks in game two, that 8-3 to three blowout. They didn't get quite as many breaks, as many bounces today, and that was a key. And that was it, 3-2 the final. Well, Kozlov didn't make any mistake here, and this was kind of a lucky bounce for Detroit. It went off a skate, back to Kozlov, and Casey couldn't see a thing. Shots high into the net, and there's no, no, nothing John could do there. Once again, John Casey did a lot throughout this game, 37 saves, and that definitely the star for game five of this series. Time now for a quick break, but when we come back, we'll take you to the other series going on today. Ron Hextall and company out to take a 3-2 series lead over the Panthers in front of the home crowd. Back with highlights after this. By Himalev, Gretzky plays it in front for Holly scores! Beautiful play by the St. Louis Blues. It started with a turnover near the blue line. Gretzky sets up Hull. St. Louis grabs the early lead. And welcome back to Blues Post Game Live, everybody. Once again, 3-2 the final, and now the series at 3-2. The Blues taking a lead and coming back to Keel Center. Let's go back now to Joe Lewis Arena. Lou Tublin standing by live with a guy who had a whale of a game today. Indeed he did, Pete. Wayne Gretzky scored not only the only goal in the uh, game the other night, game four, but a big one here tonight. Wayne, uh, what, how do you account for such a drastic turnaround from one week ago for the Blues? Well, first of all, we got a lot of pride in our locker room, and um, you know our team works very hard. Um, I think we uh, felt that as a team that we uh, played a pretty solid hockey game in Game One, and um, you know Game Two we didn't play as well, but we came home and uh, you know our fans really uh, rallied behind us and uh, created like uh, almost like an extra man for us, and you know we played very solid in Game Three and then Game Four. 
And then we came here, and I think the key was to score early and, and uh, try to get a jump on them, which we didn't do in the first two games. Holly scored a nice goal and uh, seemed to give our whole team some confidence. And, of course, as has been the case throughout the playoff, uh, John Casey made the big saves when we needed it. And you talked about toward the end of the season the necessary discipline this team needed. And there, it wasn't there at that time. We didn't see it a week ago here. But yet in the last few games, we've seen very aggressive forechecking and very disciplined hockey not taking stupid penalties. Well, we've really uh, worked hard on that part of the game as far as uh, talking about in the locker room and going over it uh, you know, endlessly, so to speak. But um, you know, more importantly, our big men, guys like Corson and uh, you know, um, Barron, uh, guys, uh, Pronger, those guys are, are playing good, physical, solid hockey, and yet they're not taking penalties. Um, when you got your big defenseman playing like that, it makes it awful difficult for forwards to penetrate to the net. And probably more important than that, we've really been disciplined as far as we haven't allowed them really any clear-cut breakaways, no two-on-ones, not a lot of three-on-twos. So as a, as a team defensive system, we've been uh, very disciplined as far as that goes. And I know on Mother's Day you had one last statement. Well, I have happy Mother's Day to my wife in St. Louis. I'm sure she's there watching and promised her a win today, and fortunately we did it. He's a man of his word. They were going up against the mother of all offense, and they come away and now head home where they haven't, thanks, Wayne, where they haven't <laughs> lost a postseason game. Pete? Boy, I tell you what, Louie, it is nice to see a smile on that man's face once again, and uh, it takes a 3-2 win to do it. We'll take it every time, right? Exactly, exactly. All right, Lou, thanks a lot. Uh, Wayne Gretzky once again with a goal and assist today. The Blues winning over Detroit 3-2, now taking a 3-2 lead in the series. We'll be back to look at the other series around the country when we come back from there. Yeah, a beautiful goal, but just one too short today for the Detroit Red Wings. Welcome back to Blues Post Game Live, everybody. Bernie in the other series today. The Flyers trying to get a leg up on the uh, Florida Panthers, and this is a Florida team that is surprising a lot of people. They got that rat attack going down there, and we'll pick up the highlights in the first. Panthers, Paul Laus with the elbow on the uh, uh, Flyers, Pat Falloon. And that'll get you five minutes, a major penalty. Yeah, a questionable five minutes. I, I, it was more like a two in playoff hockey, but he did make the call. Ron Hextall standing on his head today. Watch the big glove save on Panthers, Robert Shvela. I'll tell you what, he's a goalie that the people question, but he's been around a long time, Ron Hextall has, and he made a big save there. Later in the first, Hextall again recovers from the bad bounce off the glass, takes a goal away from Panthers, Rob Niedermeyer, and replay shows once again Hextall's a quick guy. Yeah, he is, but he shouldn't have got caught out of position, but he's really lucky that he got quick enough back to this one because this could have really been a difference in the game. Second period, Flyers on a two-man advantage. John Van Beesbrook makes a couple of great saves, but Eric Lindros finally finds the back of the net, makes it one to nothing with his sixth playoff goal. Flyers on top. Well, this is a, another big power play goal. When you get a five on three, Pete, if you don't score, you usually don't win the game. And uh, Eric with a big shot here that really Van Beesbrook doesn't see, and uh, it's behind him before he even moves. Hextall again a little later was tough in the second period. Two more big saves, and you can see uh, he gets piled upon, but still somehow manages to hold on to the puck. He's a big man, and he moves very well for his size, and you can see his athletic ability there to get his, his body stretched out and, and cover up and get that whistle. Flyers up one zip, heading to the third, but the Panthers tie it's two Barnes from Dave Lowry and Ray Shepard at 2.39, 1-1. Now we are in overtime, so I tell you what, this one... Uh, as exciting as just about any of them. Let's talk about now the other series in the East. The Pens up and the Rangers 7-3 to last night to win the series 4-1. to A little bit of a surprise as far as you're concerned. Yeah, Pete, I picked uh, uh, New York all the way. I like Messier the way he plays, but again, he's one of those situations where Pittsburgh's got Mary Lemieux uh, and Yager, two of the best players in the league right now, and they put on a clinic again last night, both getting hat-tricks. And the Hawks losing to the Avalanche last night 4-1, to so Colorado leads that series 3-2, to and uh, who knows, it may be the Avalanche and the St. Louis Blues in the final. Still plenty more to come on Blues Post Game Live. We're back to get Bernie's keys of the game right after this. What a save! What a save by Osgood! Yeah, a tremendous save by Chris Osgood, but he let three of them get through, and that's what it took today. 3-2 Blues winners over the Detroit Red Wings in Game 5. Let's head back to Joe Louis Arena now and Louie. What a difference a week makes for locker room atmosphere, huh? A tremendous difference, Pete. And, you know, we knew that this series 
would be dictated by the Russians. Little did we know that it would be the Blues, Russian Igor Kravchuk, who has a major role, the overtime winner the other night in game three, and then today a big goal, the decisive goal. Igor, uh, from the Blues' perspective, defensively, what has been the difference? Well, I guess we start to believe in ourselves, and we uh, trying to uh, uh, trying to uh, play in simple games. Sometimes, you know, clear the packs, nothing wrong with that. So, and like Mike said, if you got a chance, just jump on a play and help our forwards. What we do, so probably it's going to help our forwards. Well, the Blues have been very aggressive in their forechecking, and also the one thing that I find amazing is how easily this great team dominated by Russians is flustered why is it that you guys are able to take them out of their game so quickly well it's not easy I mean uh, to take him out actually they play in a really really strong and good game they always uh, create created a, a lot of a lot of scoring chances especially those five Russians but uh, I guess you know we we got lucky a couple of times and uh, Jim, uh, John Casey uh, made a couple of good saves for us a little bit of luck and a good play by John Casey makes a big difference. We'll throw it back to you in St. Louis, Pete. Reporting from Joe Lewis, this is Lou. I'll go try and get some other fellas. All right, Lou, thanks a lot. And, of course, a lot of keys in today's game. But, uh, Bernie, what do you think the turning point was for today's Game 5? Well, I think the fact that both Brett and Wayne both scored, but I think the whole key is the way the Blues checked. Once they got delayed, they were able to uh, check the whole time. You know, they were strong in front of the net. They cleared the puck out of their zone. They were always had two or three players on the puck. You'll see two guys there. Uh, and they're always back here. Another leech takes out Iserman. They finish their checks, and that's the key to this team. I mean, they pass so well. Unless you've got a guy back all the time, you're going to get yourself into trouble. And that's something the Blues did very, very well today. Uh, the Russians not scoring. Fedorov, Konstantinov, both scored in the series, and tiny today Kozlov. But uh, you know, non-existent is Larionov, and I don't think you know Fetisov has done nothing. And really, Coffey, another player that's not a Russian, obviously, but he hasn't done anything either. So I think that's a big deal. The, the, play, the Blues, good players have outplayed the uh, Detroit good players. And it was obvious today. Bernie, thanks a lot. Hopefully we'll see you back here next Sunday. Sounds good, Pete. Thanks All right. Me. Thanks again to Bernie Federico. That puts the wraps on this edition of Blues Post Game Live. Our thanks to Bernie for offering his insight. Jeff Cawley will have much more on today's game coming up right after the show, plus more tonight at 10 o'clock. So for the entire crew, I'm Pete Peterson. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.